Good evening. I'll call this meeting of the Housing Authority of the City of Salem for Monday, July 11th, 2022 to order. If the recorder will please call the roll. Vice Chair Stapleton is absent. Commissioner Anderson? Here. Commissioner Phillips? Here. Commissioner Leung? Here. Commissioner Gonzalez? Absent. Commissioner Nardike is absent. Commissioner Varney? Here. Chair Hoy? Here. If you'll join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Anderson, do we have any additions or deletions to the agenda? We have no additions or deletions. Thank you. And uh, we have nobody signed up for public comment for the Housing Authority. Commissioner Anderson, the consent calendar, please. Yes, um, I move uh, the consent calendar. Second. The consent calendar consists of the minutes, uh, draft minutes from the June 22nd Housing Authority minutes and absolutely nothing else. Thank you, just to clarify, it's the June 27th, I believe. Uh, yes, it is, I'm sorry, I misspoke. I said June 22nd, thanks. It was no such problem. an awesome undertaking. I wasn't sure I could get it. I was nervous. Any discussion? The recorder will please call the roll. Commissioner Gonzalez absent. Commissioner Nordyke is absent. Commissioner Varney. Aye. Vice Chair Stapleton is absent. Commissioner Anderson. Aye. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Leung. Aye. Chair Hoy. Aye. Motion passes. And uh, now we have a public hearing. Uh, so I'm going to open a public hearing on the Moving to Work demonstration program. Ms. Utes, will you be teeing this up? Good evening. I'm Nicole Utes. I'm the Housing Administrator for Salem Housing Authority. And tonight we have Melanie Fletcher, who is our Compliance Manager for the Housing Authority, to provide the public hearing. Go ahead, Melanie. Thank you, Nicole. Um, I am Melanie Fletcher, Compliance Manager for the Salem Housing Authority. Um, I have a PowerPoint presentation to go with uh, my talk, if you don't mind if I share my screen. Please do. Oh, if it will open. One moment. There we are. Are you able to see the presentation? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, I'm. Uh, I would like to thank you for um, allowing us to hold our public hearing regarding the moving to work demonstration. Um, we are really excited to uh, have the opportunity to apply for this very unique designation um, from HUD. Um, first, a little bit of background: why we would like to make this move. Um, some of the current challenges that we're facing as a housing authority are increased housing costs in Salem and Kaiser and really all over um, that are driving up the cost of providing rental assistance to low-income households in our community. We are facing low vacancy rates in the community that make it very challenging for low and moderate income families to find safe, decent, and sanitary housing. Um, HUD funding often fluctuates um, sometimes it's reduced, sometimes it's prorated. Um, we often don't know what's going to happen uh, with our budget until we are several months into the year. And rents that are collected for public housing units don't uh, completely offset re those reductions in HUD funding. So some of the challenges, additional challenges are that HUD funding doesn't keep up with the local rental market inflation. Um, administrative fees, so basically what we get paid for the work that we do to pay rental assistance, those are paid based on utilization of vouchers rather than the actual allocation of vouchers that we have. So um, we get fewer admin dollars um, than we really should based on how much funding we get. Uh, public housing portfolio is aging and capital funds um, sometimes do not keep up with maintenance needs. And the operating fund for public housing is only a portion of what is needed to pay for property upkeep. So moving to work is a unique demonstration program that allows public housing agencies to design and test innovative, 
locally designed housing and self-sufficiency strategies. It allows housing authorities to combine their public housing and housing choice voucher funds into a single source. Um, this is called fungibility. So you can use your money where it is most needed. It allows exemptions from many program rules for public housing and for the Housing Choice Voucher Program. And that administrative relief can reduce our costs and free up staff time to allow us to do things that we can't currently do under the rules that we have to operate. Um, it also allows housing authorities to do some negotiations with HUD regarding their funding. So um, gives us a little bit of mobility where the money comes. In. So this particular um, cohort of move to work agencies that HUD will be selecting in this next round. There have been four rounds so far. This is known as the asset building cohort, um, where HUD is having housing authorities test um, asset building programs. And um, we have chosen to ask to be permitted to create a savings benefit program that would benefit a select number of families that are chosen at random. They would have no out-of-pocket contribution to this um, savings account that would be established for them. It would actually be paid out of housing authority um, funding. And participation in this program helps inform national research on the effects of increased access to assets for low-income families. So it would be a longitudinal study to see what happens with these families and how does it benefit them. Uh, we would also, if we're chosen, we would become a partner in HUD's community of practice, which is a quarterly meeting among all the PHAs that are in the asset building cohort, uh, where we get to share ideas and best practices and talk about what we're doing in our local communities and how it's going, which is really exciting for us. So the application process is multi-stepped. Um, the first stage is to draft your move to work plan and make it available for public review and input for 30 days. So we posted it on June 27th um, and published a, a public notice um, of this public hearing to um, help get comments and feedback on the plan. Um, so we're doing the second step tonight, the public hearing. Uh, we will come back to the Board of Commissioners to seek approval um, on July 25th, so after we've had an opportunity to get input from the public hearing and also um, just public comments that, we, that we're seeking, uh, we will return with our, with our finalized plan that includes the, any comments that we receive um, seeking approval. And then the application package has to be submitted to HUD no later than July 28th. So we are right on schedule for that 30-day um, period. So the opt-out savings plan, this is, this is what we are envisioning. Um, the reason it's called opt-out is because um, uh, housing authorities currently are able to operate a family self-sufficiency program that requires the family to opt in to the requirements. It, it requires that folks um, either work or engage in employment-related activities such as education or seeking employment, those kinds of things. This program is opt out. They do not have to opt into any work requirements. This means we could serve families who um, are disabled or elderly or families with children with a single parent where they were working is just not feasible. Um, so the funds would be provided in the form of a savings account that would accrue for at least a year or until the account reaches a minimum of $120. There's no contract of particip participation required Households don't need to meet requirements to participate in the family self-sufficiency program. Um, all households that we assist are potentially eligible and they don't have to participate either. If they're selected at random and they say, no, I don't wanna do that, they, they're not required to. And the amounts in the con of the contributions that we would make on their behalf into the savings account are not tied to their income. They're made whether or not there's a corresponding increase in their rent. We anticipate um, that we can assist 100 families with the opt-out savings program, um, at least at the outset. If we discover that budgetarily we can support more, we certainly would want to do that because we think that this is a good benefit for our families. Um, this represents about 3% of our current client base. Um, we anticipate contributing $25 a month to a savings account for them, um, which would be a total of $2,500 per month over the course of the, of the program for the 100 participants or $30,000 a year. 
Um, the commitment for the asset building cohort is a minimum of two years. So our total investment for the life of the program would be $60,000. So some of the additional benefits of becoming a move to work agency, not only would we get to participate in this groundbreaking research and um, have the opportunity to communicate with um, housing authorities like us who are also doing this um, innovative program, but it would give us uh, that fungibility of our funds, which would allow us greater flexibility and nimbleness to respond to local housing challenges. Um, we could do things like choosing to bypass the 25% project-based voucher cap. Um, and that would give us more ability to invest in affordable housing development in our community. The reduced administrative burden could potentially free up staff time so we could pursue other activities that assist residents to be successful and maintain housing stability. And we can also research and implement changes to our programs to make them simpler for participants and for staff, um, and also to increase housing choice. So at this point, putting in our application doesn't mean that we would become a move to work agency. It just means basically that we're telling HUD that we're interested in this as a possibility. So if we are selected, we fully know that there is work ahead. Um, however, we do feel that we are well poised and ready to take on this challenge. The um, move to work designation aligns with our strategic planning, our rebrand and our reorganization. And this is really our opportunity to modernize our programs and operations and better respond to local needs while still using traditional housing program funding. So it gives us the ability to, to flex what we already have and make it work better for our community. We really see this as a logical step, next step for our organization. So we're here tonight to ask that the commission support our application to be considered for participation in the Moving to Work demonstration program. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Uh, we have nobody signed up for a public comment or for testimony, so um, we can go straight to questions. If you could stop sharing your screen for a moment. So yes, I, I am working. Oh, there we go. There we go. So, thank, you. thank you for the presentation, Ms. Fletcher. So the um, one of the things that I find the most intriguing about this program is that a lot of times a, a lot of people have opinions about things that we do, but they're not necessarily based in fact or science. And this program, this demonstration project, is actually going to give us the opportunity to build some data and to learn about programs, whether they work or not, and to see whether this is something that we would want to do uh, more widespread, uh, whether we want to do it um, you know, throughout the housing authority uh, families and, and that sort of thing. Do I have that correct? Yes. Sorry, yes. Yes. housing. Yes, you are correct. And we want to also, we, we accepted the emergency housing vouchers as an opportunity to learn. And we feel this is another opportunity to show and learn across country that uh, if you can build assets for your clientele, that they have the opportunity to make that car repair, buy that tire that um, went flat so they couldn't get to work, pay that rent when something came up or pay that doctor's bill. So we're really excited to even have the chance or the opportunity to see this grow. Excellent. And it's really quite a tight timeline, isn't it, to get this whole application. And But as I understand it, even though we didn't have anybody signed up tonight, if people have comments, they have they have until our next meeting two weeks from tonight to get written comment into this. Is that correct? That is correct. Great. Uh, do we have any questions from any other um, any other commissioners? I am not seeing any other questions or comments. Uh, Ms. Utes or Ms. Fletcher, is there anything you would like to say in terms of a closing or are you, are you good? I'm just going to say thank you for the time tonight to allow us to, to have this public hearing and meet our timeline. We knew it was a little additional meeting for us this month. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Anderson. I have a motion to make if that's, uh, that's appropriate now. Just one moment. Um, I first I need to just close the public hearing okay. and uh, go for it. I move that the commission authorize uh, the staff to apply to HUD for its most recent um, moving to work demonstration program. Second. 
Um, there's not much to say on this except to say that it's terrific. And I am proud of the work that our staff has done to get us to this point. And one of the things that I see completely is what we talk about all the time and people who end up homeless. They are in housing. Then they have medical bills. They have car payments. They have something unexpected that, in effect, knocks them out of the housing. And this kind of program will, will be there to offer kind of a, a, a safety net and a shield if this comes up. So I think that's terrific. And uh, um, I applaud uh, the work that the Housing Authority has done. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, if the report will please call the roll. Commissioner Nordyke is absent. Commissioner Barney. Aye. Vice Chair Stapleton is absent. Commissioner Anderson. Aye. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Leung. Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez. Absent. Chair Hoy. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you and congratulations staff. We appreciate the hard work on that. Uh, I see that we have no special orders of business and no information reports tonight. So unless there is any other business, the housing authority is adjourned. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to call this, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, this meeting of the Salem City Council to order for Monday, July 11th. If the uh, recorder would please call a roll. Councillor Stapleton is absent. Councillor Anderson. Present. Councillor Phillips. Here. Councillor Leung. Here. Councillor Gonzalez. Absent. Councillor Hoy. Here. Councillor Nordyke is absent. Councillor Varney. Here. Mayor Bennett. Here. Okay. Any additions or Deletions, Councillor Hoy? Yes, I move approval of additions and deletions to the agenda. Second. Second by Phillips. So we have item 5D. We have uh, added a revised explanatory statement. And item 5E has been added. It's approval of the appointment of Keith Staley as Salem City Manager. Excellent. Okay. Any discussion? Any objections? Okay, it's unanimous then. We'll go ahead uh, to council and city manager comments. Councilor Hoy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that uh, I was able to do this past the past few days. On Friday, I was, uh, along with uh, your honor, we were at the uh, opening day of the Marion County Fair, which was quite a nice event. Uh, the barbecue for local elected officials so uh got to enjoy that and it was nice to see the, bar the fair back in full swing and then yesterday morning i had the great honor of holding the finish line ribbon at the iron man uh along with councillor varney and commissioner cameron and representative raquel Moore green we uh held the uh the finish tape and that was and, put, and we're able to put the uh medals around the necks of the uh of the winners so that was such an amazing event and I think really an important event for our community. Downtown was a buzz for at least three days, maybe four days. And so many people in every restaurant around, every coffee shop, all over the place. I would really encourage people to keep an eye on this thing next year and uh, get out and volunteer. And, and even if it's just to cheer people on, you know, stand along the, uh, along the routes and cheer people. I think it's just a really great great asset for our community and really encourage people to participate. So thank you. Very good. Anyone else? Councilor Phillips. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to second everything uh, City Council President Chris Hoy just said. Um, I think it's really awesome that our community was able to recruit the, the half triathlon, the Ironman event. Uh, I wasn't able to attend. I got off work at 2 a.m. Uh, Sunday morning, uh, so I was sleeping soundly. But it looks like five of my partners uh, were able to participate successfully and safely. 
Um, and it was really fun to you know see their posts on social media and to see so many people in our community you know uh, react to it uh, spontaneously um, in real time from a distance you know virtually. Uh, but it really is uh, an incredible thing, and uh, you know from the partners who've participated, um, they they recommend it highly. Um, they'll probably be sore for the next week. Um, and then I'll just transition to the thing I always plug, which is the vaccines. Um, you know, speaking of my work as an emergency room doctor at Salem Hospital, uh, you know, we're still busy. We've stayed busy, um, and I'm still caring for patients who have acute or worsening COVID-19 every shift. Um, I'm trying to keep the advice as simple and straightforward as possible. If you're six months or older, you can get fully vaccinated. If you're five years and older, you can get boosted, which is a series of three shots. And if you're over the age of 50, you can get four shots. So, you know, get fully vaccinated and boosted. Um, they're widely available through primary care clinics and pharmacies. They're safe and highly effective. Um, and, you know, we're just, we're, we really haven't had a dip um, since we've just kind of been cycling with these new variants. I don't know what the letters are, BA4 and BA5, but with the subvariants, it's just another good time uh, to get fully vaccinated and boosted if you can and make our, our jobs in the front lines of healthcare just a bit easier and keep yourself safe and protected. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to tag on to Council Phillip and Council uh, uh, President Hoy's remarks about the triathlon. I couldn't be there, but I have been a participant, a solo participant in two of these before and part of a relay in three of them. And I just want to say that uh, Councillor Nishioka is continuing the proud tradition of War Two because she was in the triathlon as a, as a part of a relay uh, over the weekend. So go war two. Thanks. Thank you. Councilor DeYoung. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I have a few, um, really brief announcements. First time I wasn't able to also to make triathlon. I was actually up in Seattle doing, um, outreach in, uh, Kent, Washington to the Micronesian community out there and getting, um, resources uh, to members of the community. Um, second, um, my nonprofit, the Micronesian Outer Community, is actually distributing food boxes tomorrow for families in need. So if anybody needs a food box, we will be at Woodmancy, um, the sheltered area from 5 to 6 p.m. tomorrow. So come on by if you need to pick up a food box for somebody else, you're able to do that as well. We have, I think, about 80 food boxes tomorrow. So if you know anybody who needs a food box, they're prepackaged. Majority of it is canned goods with some other non-perishable goods. For members of our community. And the last thing I just wanted to briefly touch upon is that the last week of June from the 27th to the 29th, I was actually out on the coast um, because uh, we had, there was a housing uh, justice conference that I was attending, picking up some additional new ideas and how we can work on um, addressing the housing shortages and needs of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I had the uh, pleasure of uh, going down to uh, Riverfront Park Sunday morning at about 5 a.m. Uh, to kick off the, uh, about 5.30 to kick off the uh, triathlon. It was, it really is something. There were 2,500 participants, uh, I don't know, a billion dollars worth of bicycles on the lawn out there. Uh, it, it really was an outstanding event. Uh, it's one that we can be very proud of. Thank our friends at Travel Salem for the tremendous work they've done in getting this uh, into the community. It's having a, a really positive impact on the economy of downtown during its three-day run. It, it really is an outstanding event. They'll be back next year. Uh, the operators of this, the folks in charge of it, uh, are, are very, very excited about Salem. They get nothing but positive uh comments from those who are participants from all over the country. Uh, and they're extremely happy with the way this has been handled here in the community and uh, the assistance we've given them. So uh, really, really pleased with that. I wanna do a couple of just quick uh, shout outs to my uh, friend, Kimberly Fitzgerald, our uh, historic preservation officer. Uh, on June 24th, the State Advisory Committee on Historic Pre Preservation was here to uh, uh, take a tour of the Civic Center and have determined uh, its eligibility for listing on the National Register of Historic Places. 
It's being forwarded then to the National Council on Historic Preservation. Uh, very likely, uh, City Hall will become a historic building. Uh, it was uh, very interesting, uh, and I'm sure each of you would have found it this way, to listen to the discussion of the really interesting architecture of our City Hall and uh, listen to the excitement about seeing uh, this style of architecture, architecture the uh, uh, really praised and the work that's been done here to maintain City Hall. And second, the city's Historic Landmark Commission was recently awarded the National Alliance of Preservation Commission's Commission of Excellence Award for its best practice protection of Salem's archeological resources. They've done a tremendous job of uh, developing, along with Kimberly and others, uh, the tribal representatives, uh, some really outstanding best practices in our community to preserve uh, the long-term history of this community and the artifacts that uh, help inform it. So uh, congratulations to them and to uh, Kimberly for this tremendous work. Mickey, Barty. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I just thought I'd add, because I had not been to the uh, Ironman Triathlon before. I couldn't make it last year, and I was so impressed. Um, I went to the convention center on Saturday and just listening to the comments and the excitement and seeing all the people downtown. And I don't know how many times I said, wow, I've never been to Salem before. And this place is awesome. And as for a location, they said with the way it, it's uh, situated with Riverfront being in the middle, it's a perfect location. Uh, so I encourage folks to come next year, and they do have 700 volunteers in addition to everybody else. So it's a great event. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Rutherford, anything in your shop? I don't have anything for you this evening. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll move on then. Let me find my uh, agenda here. Okay, no proclamations, okay, no presentations. So we'll go to public comment. I've got uh, four people signed up, Craig Urbani. It's Good uh, three minutes, Craig, uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll ask any questions we have. Good evening, Council. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. We have... Uh, Actually, I think we have sent information to, um, I think, almost all of the council um, and have talked to some people about uh, our, our issue. Um, we're talking about a series of free concerts in a park uh, in West Salem at Rosemont and Plaza. That project or that concert series was actually begun by City of Salem staff uh, and the Lions Club assisted staff for a number of years and started in 1983. When Measure 5 came along and there were some severe budget cuts, uh, city staff no longer had the resource or they didn't have the staff to continue to support the concerts. So the Lions Club have kept it going and it ran for 36 consecutive seasons through 2019. 20 and 21 were lost to COVID. Um, <clears throat> and as part of it, um, we actually physically constructed the stage that is in that park uh, and donated it to the city. There is no city money of any kind in that stage. Uh, and then the later, the city ran a project to add electric uh, lights, some additional lighting in the park. We contributed money to pay for the electrification of the stage. Uh, Ken Dalkey, uh, who is an avid concert goer there, actually got the roof permanent roof project together, and we contributed to that also. Um, so over the years, we have volunteered and created a family-friendly event in that park and kept things going, something that the city could no longer afford to do. Um, and then, as best we can tell, about 2012, the city began to charge us fees to use the park. And initially, the fees were in like $200 a season. And then in 2019, the city charged us $311 uh, 
$311 in fees for six concerts. This year, we uh, got a bill for $965 for four concerts. That's $965 that the Lions will not have to provide eyeglasses and hearing aids to low-income individuals. Um, and I see that I'm running out of time, so we're going to have a couple of very specific requests. We think it's unfair that the city treats us who made a capital improvement in a park differently than they treat the rotary. So I think I'm, that's my time. Okay, thanks, Craig. Are there any questions for Mr. Urban? Thank you very much, Craig. So we'll go to uh, Cecilia Urban. Aha. Okay. I guess my time started, so I better yep. start talking. Cecilia DeSantis Urbani. I'm on the board of directors for the West Salem Lions Club. And as Craig said, he's he's been the chair of the concert series in the park. Uh, and we had filed and waiver, a fee waiver. And we had filled out the appropriate paperwork um, and we were moving forward with that. And last Thursday, we were notified of, by the uh, staff that that had been removed from your agenda. And instead now you have five point B. And so here we are. We wanted to remind you that volunteerism for this city is what made us an all-American city. And I think that's a real important thing. I heard you talking about the race that just happened. Well, there are all kinds of civic groups like the West Salem Lions Club that continue to do those same things on an individual basis. And the series of concerts are one of those. So we would um, uh, like to request the city council uh, to uh, pull this agenda item 5.B and have additional investigation and action on this topic of waiving the fees. Specifically, we would request that you direct staff to prepare an agreement between the city and the West Salem Lions Club to waive the facility use fees for the West Salem Park for the annual summer concert series, which normally would have been uh, six concerts. And uh, we believe that that's appropriate because to be fair and equitable between the Rotary Club, the Lions Club and other nonprofits, that's what we should be doing. We've done um, substantial improvements in the park and um, we actually did those in good faith, knowing that the, the, the city was gonna be our, our partner and that's not where we are right now. Additionally, we would request that, that other nonprofits also be investigated as far as their improvements that they've done in parks and a similar agreement. Mike, check out the Facebook of, uh, paid for the soapbox derby um, that didn't get held in Salem this year because of issues with the city of Salem. They went to Elgin, Oregon. So all those people that you saw in Salem. Thanks. Grace. Thanks. I really appreciate it. I uh, really appreciate the, uh, I just myself, your concert series has always been uh, a real highlight. So uh, real interested in this DJ Vincent. Oops, I didn't, did anyone have any questions for Cease? I apologize. Okay. Uh, Councilor Hoy does. DJ, go ahead. Oh, you're muted. I'm sorry. Good, good evening, Mr. Mayor and uh, Councilors. DJ Vincent, uh, pastor of Church of the Park. Um, I always want to start with gratitude. It has um, been an amazing season as we head into the summer. Um, where we are celebrating with the city um, the full green light to move the current Village of Hope operations that is sheltering 80 people a night to Center Street, and that is underway and should be completed um, by the end of August. 
Um, we're honored to be managing the Safe Parking Program. And uh, tonight, eight churches will be hosting um, parkers. And hopefully by the end of this fall, um, we'll be seeing the opening of Front Street to help up to 30 safe parkers a night. Um, I'm coming to you tonight um, because of what I believe is a really strategic opportunity. And so we own the property um, at 2410 Turner Road. Church of the Park does, and uh, the city council has approved it to be um, developed as a micro shelter site, which again would uh, transition us from the walk-up day services that we offer now. Um, we have not just been waiting um, on the city. We've been seeking to raise other funds and make other applications. We did make an application to shelter folks 18 to 24 years old, and we received partial funding for that project. We have also raised um, partial funding for the startup. And so I come tonight as the city is receiving $2.5 million in new money to help with uh, sheltering um, to consider if this is a project that again would strategically open up before the end of this year, 40 more beds for folks who are unsheltered, specifically 18 to 24 years old. They would have all of these services on site, case management, mental health support, um, showers, restrooms. Um, the, the team would be providing these things that I have sent to you as well. Um, so I don't run out of time. Um, the project budget, as you can see here, again, there are still startup funds that would be needed, but we've raised even more um, than what is still required. And there would be um, annual operations, but we believe after this first two years that we can go back and in uh, good faith apply for all the funding for the operations of this particular micro shelter location. Um, and again, so I think this is a strategic opportunity that is before you um, even now. Okay, thank you, DJ. I had uh, uh, one question if I could. Um, did I understand you to say then you would be stopping walk-up services at the uh, current Turner Road location? It's the way it sounded, and I just wanna make sure I understood that. Yes, Mayor Bennett, we have been weighing that decision and uh, we agree that if we offer micro sheltering there, we will not be offering uh, daytime walk-up services. That is Great. correct. Great, thank you. Uh, Councillor Leung. Thank you. Um, thank you, DJ, for your presentation. Quick question, um, for the youth, is it going to be for, for males and female or only for one gender? Both male, female, and those not identifying. Okay, thank you. Councillor Phillips. Yeah, thank you, uh, DJ, for presenting. And, and it's always, you know, coming together with like a really good idea for our community. Um, as you know, this, this uh, site has already been approved by city council for locating a, a managed micro shelter site. Um, in past conversations, uh, the community adjacent um, has expressed some concerns about the accumulation of people not on site, uh, specifically at Cascade Gateway Community Park. Um, I think that one of the more pressing concerns recently was providing day services, and I think you guys have, have thought that through and, and found a way to, to achieve the most good for the most people um, with this proposal. But um, for people who are still concerned about the possibility of, you know, an accumulation of campers adjacent to this property, um, do you guys have any commitments to like a radius that you'll kind of keep track of um, in terms of uh, the backside of this property being right there next to Cascade Gateway? So we would be happy to partner with the city to define um, what space our safety team will, will need to uh, three times a day, even walk around and make sure folks aren't setting up tents or you know, uh, beginning to accumulate. And so we did that for Center Street and we would be honored to do that in cooperation with what the city would deem best and even seek input from the neighbors. Um, uh, Corey Poole, the, the chair of the Neighborhood Association has even said tomorrow he'll hear um, this proposal and potentially bring a, a letter of support from the Neighborhood Association for micro sheltering. 
he's been unbashful in his support of micro sheltering. He's not a fan of uh, accumulating uh, campers behind Paradise Island Park or offering daytime uh, day services. I understand that. And then my follow-up question, DJ, you probably don't know the answer to, but just to the staff would be, is the $2.5 million that we're going to be accepting uh, later on uh, this evening in the what I think is a historic consent agenda for city council, um, is it already uh, kind of committed? Or is there some flexibility that we can consider uh, proposals like uh, DJ Vincent's proposal? I think that question was directed at Gretchen and Josh, who I've seen them both sharing their screen, so I don't want to speak out of turn. Gretchen, did you want to answer the counselor's question? I'll defer to Josh. Thank you. Josh. Good evening. Josh Eggleston, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, good question. It hasn't been technically allocated. We're hoping to come back to council to have a uh, work session or a special orders of business conversation about the topic in general. Um, but what I will say is that the current obligation of the city has for micro shelter and other sheltering activities is expansive. Uh, currently, it looks like with these funds included, the 750 and the 2.5 were funded through 2024. If we add other programs, it could uh, limit uh, how long we can keep those open. Thank you. Thank you. Is that Thank you? Councilor Phillips, okay? Okay. Councilor Anderson? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm very excited about uh, DJ about the no daytime walk up at Cascade Gateway Park because I know Corey Poole just about as well as you do. That's my neighborhood group, uh, Paradise Island and Semka. And uh, I'll be going there tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. So it's great because this is one of the things they have really been pushing for. And I to commending them, not just Corey, but the whole group there. Nobody has spoken out against uh, the kind of ca camping that you're talking about, what their concerns have been with the walk-up folks who do not have the same level invested in where they're living as the people who you are looking at uh, and helping at the site. So this is terrific, and thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hoy? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you, DJ, for your testimony. I uh, wanted to chat for a moment about you, you referenced that you had applied for money and, and didn't receive the full funding. And just for my colleagues' uh, edification, that was through the Mid Willamette Valley Homeless Alliance uh, uh, process, and that I was part of that decision that uh, ultimately didn't fund this program in full. We funded a different program. Uh, for tra youth transitional housing through community action agency, but we were able to fund uh, some support services for Church of the Park. DJ, could you describe those services and uh, what they will look like, whether or not we were we would go forward with the the concept you talked about tonight? Very good. So uh, we had imagined the the services of reaching out to youth to provide uh, immediate you know, counseling and, and care, uh, job mentorship, um, and then uh, mentorship in terms of getting them set on their feet into to housing. We, we will provide those services no matter what, but if a micro shelter community is not funded, we'll be providing those through the day walk-up um, opportunities that happen there at 2410 Turner Road. Okay. Thank you. Right. Any further questions? Great. Thank you, DJ. Very good. Uh, Josh Erickson. Good evening. Uh, looks like you get two Church of the Park here in a row. Uh, I'm actually here to just uh, chat a little bit about the line item for the laundry trailer here uh, that's coming up. Um, I just essentially just want to say thank you to the group that has come before you. Uh, I got connected with um, a local advocate uh, Kathleen Thorpe and um, a county employee that works with sanitation, um, Rachel Van Wart. And uh, we just started brainstorming what it looks like to help get some of the textiles out of the landfill. And so uh, a lot of these cleanups, a lot of what we're seeing with our um, encampments, but also even at our shelters um, is, you know, laundry is expensive. Um, and when we don't have access to that, uh, we run donation centers. And so people are coming to get new clothes 
throwing those other ones away and taking showers, which is great. Uh, but we'd love to be able to clean up and be able to recycle more. And so as we talked through that and wanted to talk through some opportunities, um, a great partnership with Covanta, Republic Services, Marion County, and the city of Salem has come together to try to purchase this laundry trailer um, at, that we would love to host at our uh, family site and then provide opportunities for um, a few of our family or a few of our advocates to be able to access the laundry services as well. Um, and kind of run a pilot program to see how much uh, we are able to keep out of the landfill and then be able to replicate um, possibly with more grant money as we have more um, uh, data to base this off of. Uh, so thank you to those groups. Thank you to uh, everyone that's come to the table to help make this happen. Um, and then I'm mostly just here to answer any questions as that line item comes up or now. Great. Thank you very much. That's a real exciting project. Sounds like a Sounds like a good one. Um, okay, we'll then uh, move forward uh, to the consent calendar. Councilor Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move approval of the consent calendar with the exception of items 3.2A, pulled by Mayor Bennett, oh. 3.3A, pulled by Councilor Hoy, and 3.3C, pulled by Councilor Anderson. Sam, one more. Could you say uh, 3.2A, 3.3A, 3.3C are the polls? Correct. Oh, Correct. Okay, great. But I heard one in there. Okay. Hello. We need a second, Mr. Mayor. I know. Just a sec. I just want to make sure what I was get, asking for a second from. Who's going to say? I think that we have a speaker that. Um, was yeah, maybe, somebody's on here talking. It's, want to it's former Mayor Jarentrek who didn't get to speak, I think, maybe, or is he? No, he comes up later. We'll call on him when it's his turn. Great. So maybe we just need to have him mute his yeah. microphone. I'll second. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Okay. So that right, leaves ahead. us with item 3.1A, the June 27th, 2022 Draft City Council Minutes. Item 3.3B, an intergovernmental agreement with the U.S. Geological Survey Agreement to maintain a water quality monitoring program in the North San Diego River Basin. Item 3.3D, acceptance of a grant from Marion County to fund capital costs at the Navigation Center. Item 3.3E, acceptance of a grant from the State of Oregon to fund capital costs at the Navigation Center. Item 3.3F, laundry services for people who are unsheltered. And that concludes the consent calendar. Very good. Any questions or comments? There's some amazing programs in this consent calendar. Really? Today. Really? Yeah, historic. I'm looking forward to, uh, I think Councillor Anderson will speak to some. I, I think it's, this is really, I think you made a good point, Councillor Phillips. This is really a kind of historic little consent calendar here. Yeah. A lot of really good things in here. This consent calendar will change uh, change lives for people. There's no doubt well, about it. Well, this is one of those things we've been working on for a number of years, and we're really getting there. And this uh, this navigation center funding is really fantastic. Uh, just just very good stuff. Okay, uh, if the recorder could please call the roll. Councilor Leung. Hi. Councilor Gonzalez. I believe is with us, no longer with us. Councilor Hoy? Aye. Councilor Nordyke is absent. Councilor Varney? Aye. Councilor Stapleton is absent. Councilor Anderson? Aye. Councilor Phillips? Aye. Mayor Bennett? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Great. Hey, okay, we'll go to our public hearing. Okay. The Salem City Council will now conduct a public hearing concerning designation of the Eco Earth Globe located at 230 Front Street Southeast as a historic resource. The criteria applicable to the decision is SRC 230.010E. Testimony, arguments, and evidence must be directed toward the applicable criteria or other criteria which the person believes to apply to the decision. A failure to raise an issue accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the decision maker and the parties an opportunity to respond to the issue shall preclude appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals on that issue. A similar failure to raise constitutional issues relating to proposed conditions of approval precludes an action for damages in circuit court. 
Testimony will be allowed as follows. The applicant is limited to 10 minutes. And I don't believe there's anyone here from the Neighborhood so Association, but if there is, they have five minutes. And then other interested parties are limited to three minutes. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Um, I think this is going to be presented by uh, Kimberly Fitzgerald. Kimberly, you want yeah. to go ahead? Yes, thank you. Kimberly Fitzgerald, Historic Preservation Officer for the City of Salem. Uh, this is a class four legislative hearing of a proposal to consider a local historic designation of the Eco Earth Globe. The application was originally submitted by the Salem Public Art Commission. I'd like to enter the staff report and all testimony into the record. Uh, the Eco Earth Ball is located in Riverfront Park at 230 Front Street. Uh, the, the Salem Public Art Commission requested this local designation for uh, the Eco Earth Globe's association with, the Sa with Salem's papermaking industry, as well as for its significance as one of Salem's first community art projects that adaptively reused an industrial structure. Uh, on August 7, 1960, the 10-ton, 26-foot diameter tank for acid storage was pushed by a tugboat on the Willamette River for installation in what is now Riverfront Park. I, I really love this picture. You, you can see it on the upper left of your screen. Um, previously, the Oregon Pulp and Paper Company had used wooden tanks, but these needed replacement since the acid destroyed the wooden walls of these tanks. The tank held acid used in cooking wood chips into pulp. Um, the pulp mill closed in June, 1982 and the city of Salem in a project spearheaded by former mayor Roger Gertenrich uh, asked that Boise Cascade leave the acid ball with the idea that it could become an amenity in the new riverfront park. Volunteers worked an estimated 30,000 hours over a five year period to convert this one time eyesore into a public work of art. Uh, members of the public contributed more than $70,000 by purchasing country flags for $50 each or uh, icons for $200 each. The Eco Earth's board of directors, chaired by former Mayor Roger Gertenrich, set the unveiling to coincide with the annual World Beat Festival at the park. The Eco Earth Globe of the World was turned over to the people of Salem on June 28, 2003. And that same day was proclaimed Eco Earth Day in Oregon uh, by Governor Kulingoski. After many years, the globe is showing signs of disrepair and the globe is starting to lose tiles among some other maintenance issues. So the P Salem Public Art Commission is leading an effort to restore the globe and raise funds for its restoration and designation of the globe as a local resource will ensure increased access to funding to help restore it. On April 21st, 2022, the Salem Historic Landmarks Commission held the first evidentiary public hearing to consider whether the potential resource meets the applicable criteria in Salem Revised Code 230.010 for age, significance, and integrity. They found that the Eco Earth Globe is 60 years old and retains its original form and location. They further found that it has cultural significance for its association with the local Salem paper industry and human significance for its association with the community and the successful efforts to adaptively reuse this industrial structure as a community art piece. So in conclusion, the Landmarks Commission found that the resource does meet the applicable criteria for local historic resource designation and recommends the City Council designate the Eco Earth Globe as a local historic resource. That concludes the staff report. Great, thank you. And we'll, uh, if you have any questions for Kimberly, we'll, as soon as we get done with the public uh, testimony, we'll open it up again. Uh, Colin, Christine, Darcy, she's applicant representing the Public Art Commission. Christine, you're on mute. There we go. Good evening. I'm Chris Darcy. I live in the Fairmount neighborhood of Ward 2. I'm the current chair of the Salem Public Art Commission. My comments will be brief because Kimberly did uh, a, an outstanding job explaining why the Echo Earth Globe um, deserves to be designated as a local historic resource. I, 
Many of you probably know that back in the day, Riverfront, the area that is now known as Riverfront Park was a heavily industrialized area, polluted, kind of belching chemicals. And the Earth Ball really is one of the only relics from those days, which are now far gone. Um, earlier, many of you spoke about the Iron Man uh, event this weekend. It was really amazing to see literally hundreds of photographs on social media of those uh, runners, men, women, old, young, everything else, uh, running past the Echo Earth Globe triumphant into Riverfront Park. It is one of Salem's largest community arts projects. Our Oregon weather has not been good to the Earth Globe. Um, between climate change, hotter weather, ice storms, what have you, um, the tiles are deteriorating. We uh, at the commission work closely with Public Works. We did a conservation assessment. The Salem Park Fa Parks Foundation has stepped up to really take the lead on the fundraising. And as Kimberly mentioned, we know that a local historic designation will help us uh, connect with the funders for whom that is an important factor. So I'm here to answer any questions and we look forward to your support of this request tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, any questions? Okay, thank you very sure, much. Sure. And uh, former mayor, Roger Gurdenrich. Roger? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, you you don't have a photo, I presume? No, we don't. Okay, uh, well, I, the first thing I wanna say is that uh, Salem's a wonderful city and uh, it's well governed and it's a great place to raise a family. It has fantastic volunteer base, always has, and it has a sense of community. Moved here in, in 1963 with my family, lived here for 35 years. And I wanna mention quickly three projects that I was involved with that exhibit this sense of community and the volunteerism. The first one is in 1964, the year of the flood. The other big issue of that year was fluoridation. Both Portland, uh, Salem and Eugene had it on on its issue to vote on. Eugene and Portland snuck it in. They were told to just keep it quiet and sneak it in. In Salem, I was called up by uh, uh, the, the head of the Marion County Health Department. He asked me to lead the effort to uh, get Fl Salem Florida. I told him I would on one condition if we kept it tra very transparent and open. We did that. Portland and Eugene lost, Salem won. And that shows a sense of doing the right thing and having a community sense of community. So that's one example. A few years later, I was the city councilor from Ward 3. And in that ward was the Elsinore Theater. And it was in bad shape and it was targeted to be torn down. So I brought five people, Salemites, into my dental office and told them we were going to save that, save the Elsinore. That took a long time. It was a, up, a, a difficult issue to deal with, but it was saved. And it took businessmen and, and artists working together to do that. It's another example of volunteering and a sense of community. Salem did the right thing, and now you have a, an Elsinore Theater, I think, that will serve the community for many years. The last example is when I was mayor, and this acid, ugly acid ball was left, and I really didn't want to, to take on another project at that time, as Mayor Bennett, I'm sure you can realize that you probably don't want to take on another project right about now. <laughs> but it was a situation where one group said they should turn it into Roger, a I'm going to have to stop you there for a second. And then I'll uh, okay. uh, open it up for uh, any questions. But I would like to hear uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, answer uh, kind of what what happened there with the Earth Ball? What got us to where we are today? 
You want me to tell you that or we open it up? No, I want you to tell me right now. Okay. Well, first of all, it was, people said it should be a Chia Pets. People said put a wick on it, make it a bomb. People said <laughs> paint it uh, uh, yellow and call it a, or we brought again together the business community and, our, and, and the artists as it's well known. And after those $30,000, you have what you have. You have a thing that needs some tender love and care and the city, it deserves that. And I'm confident that the city will do that. Well, Roger, thank you very much. And thank you very much for the time you've spent uh, uh, following this issue, making sure we did the right thing here. And I and, uh, really appreciate, uh, obviously, your contribution. You outlined uh, major contributions to the cultural history of the community and the work you've done so and did at that time. So thank you very much. Are there any questions for uh, uh, former Mayor Gertenrich? Well, again, Roger, thank you so much for uh, putting this together so we have a chance to repair it and bring it back for another 20, 30 years or more. Uh, really, really appreciate it. I look forward to that. You bet. Uh, any questions for Kimberly or for Chris? Okay. Well, I'm going to close the public hearing. Councillor Hoy, do you want to move this forward? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move we advance ordinance bill 13 22 to second reading for an act. Second. Second by Anderson. Any discussion? I think this is a worthy project and uh, something we definitely need to be. Uh, putting our energy into saving. It's definitely an asset for our city and I'm happy to move it forward. But yes, uh, Councilor my Bill. comments would just be two thumbs up. It's great. Like so many great. things tonight. It's, yeah. uh, it's been a long time coming, but it's awesome. Yeah, this is really great. I, I can I go back far enough to remember the acid ball and, uh, and uh, really what a tremendous change this was. Uh, the whole riverfront, but this was one of the real highlights. Uh, and the, the discussion, it'd be fun someday. I hope somebody writes the history of the discussion that went on around what to do there and probably all the way to Albany with a solar system. There was a whole bunch of interesting discussion on this. And again, I wanna just uh, on behalf of the city, thank Roger for uh, sort of leaving this to us to have something to repair down there like this and have it uh, continue. So. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Would you call the roll, Ms. Recorder? Yes, Councillor Gonzalez. Hi. Ah, thank you. Thanks. Councillor Hoy. Hi. Councillor Nordyke is absent. Councillor Varney? Aye. Councillor Stapleton is absent. Councillor Anderson? Uh. Councillor Phillips? Aye. Councillor Leung? Aye. Mayor Bennett? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Very good. We'll move on then to special orders of business. It looks like uh, 5A is going to be our deliberations on our Salem project. Is there any, is there a staff report on this? Are we just going to deliberate? I believe we're just deliberating, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Councillor Hoy, you want to give me a motion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move City Council advance to second reading ordinance bills number 9 22, 10 22, 11 22, and 12 22. Second. Second by Phillips. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I also want to start a series of what I believe will be probably six, at least, amend amendments to that motion, and I'll go first. Okay. I move to amend the original motion to remove the ordinance number 10-20, remove from ordinance number 10-22, the property at 2390 Brown Road Northeast, 
that is proposed to be redesignated to mixed use on map 26 and rezoned to neighborhood hub on map 33. I'll second. Thank you. Would you like me to speak to this now or would yes. you know, would how would you like to do it? Would you like to do them as a group? Maybe we got to do them just one at a time. Just move. I think we can move on through them pretty quick. Though. Great. This is a uh, this address on is right next to the uh, to be developed Brown Road Park. There's uh, Brown Road's recently been um, upgraded. There's been a significant amount of, of uh, discussion amongst the property owner, the neighborhood association, and the neighbors just really feel like this is a, a location that's best left as is and not redesignated as a neighborhood hub. So I am uh, supporting their, their desire by offering this amendment to the motion. Uh, Councilor Anderson, did you want to speak to this motion or amendment? Yeah. No, Mr. Mayor, I didn't. I'm going to make another amendment. That's what I thought. And we'll have, Coy will call you out, I think. We'll have you. Sure, do, uh, sure. Yeah, we're going to go, if it's all right, we'll go to Barney next. We'll just go down. Barney, yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> Why don't we vote on this one? Let's call the roll on this amendment. But, well, I guess, Mayor, if I have a question before we vote. Oh, Okay. That was the question. Go ahead. Yeah, perfect. So, uh, Councillor Hoy, thank you for bringing this uh, forward for consideration. Uh, you know, I think all of us had a chance to talk with staff, you know, last month ahead of time. I was aware it was something that the community uh, in, in Ward 6 was tracking closely. And I just want to be crystal clear. I think I am. But by making the motion, you've been convinced by the residents who live in this area that would be affected that this is not the, the best or ideal location for a neighborhood hub. That's why I brought the amendment, yes. Yep, thank you for making that crystal clear. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now if the recorder please call the roll. Councilor Hoy. Aye. Councilor Nordyke is absent. Councilor Barney. Aye. Councilor Stapleton absent. Councilor Anderson. Aye. Councilor Phillips. Aye. Councilor Leung. Aye. Councilor Gonzalez. Aye. Mayor Bennett. Aye. Okay, motion passes and uh, uh, Councilor Barney. Central motion's now been amended with this and who's next, Councilor? Barney. Barney. Me. <laughs> okay, I move to uh, amend the original motion, the amended motion to remove the ordinance number 1022 or from ordinance number 1022, the properties north of Orchard Heights Road, Northwest, that are proposed to be redesignated to multiple family residential on map 159. I'll second. second. Go ahead. Okay. Um, oh, okay. yeah. I wanted to explain, um, this was originally proposed mixed use two to allow for a, a mix of uses. And after many conversations with interested parties, and discussion uh, with the neighborhood association, it, it was determined that Salem would still be able to meet its projected housing needs without this property included. Um, so it was passed at the neighborhood association to remove this. Um, so this motion is just to implement the wish of all the parties. Very good. Any discussion? Councillor Phillips. Thank you, uh, Mayor Bennett. And thank you, uh, Councillor Varney for bringing this forward. Um, I, I think things have changed a bit in the last couple months. Uh, so I, I'm thinking that you may have another motion uh, after this one. And I just want to confirm that there will be a motion affecting the south of Orchard Heights as well, um, which I think I've heard from staff kind of decreases the need to have this uh, multiple family in the first place. So uh, I appreciate the motion. I plan to support it. But I just want to make sure that there is going to be some changes south of Orchard Heights as well on a future motion. Okay. okay. Thanks. <laughs> okay, anyone else? All right, if the recorder please call a roll. Councilor Nordyke is absent. Councilor Varney. Aye. Councilor Stapleton absent. Councilor Anderson. Aye. Councilor Phillips. Aye. Councilor Leung. Aye. Councillor Gonzalez? Aye. Councillor Hoy? Aye. Mayor Bennett? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Now, who's next, Chris? Barney. Barney. 
Okay, uh, the next one is I move to amend the original motion to rezone and redesignate the properties south of Orchard Heights Road Northwest that are proposed to be rezoned to mixed use two on map 190 and redesignated to mixed use on map 160 to reflect staff's original proposal to rezone and redesignate only the northern portions of the impacted properties. Second. Second by Hoy. Okay. Go ahead, Mickey. Do you want to okay. Uh, staff originally zoned the northern portion of this property MU2 and the southern portion RM2. And then late, later, uh, the Planning Commission rezoned the entirety of the property from RA to uh, uh, MU2 for a greater cohesion of development. And then following further discussions going on and uh, uh, an approval at the Neighborhood Association for the, this motion. Um, it's the consensus of the parties that the parcel should revert back to what staff originally proposed with only the northern half changed to M MU2. Okay. Any discussion? Questions? Okay. The clerk would please call the roll. Councillor Varney. Aye. Councillor Stapleton absent. Councillor Anderson. Aye. Councillor Phillips. Aye. Councillor Leung. Aye. Councillor Gonzalez. Aye. Councillor Hoy. Aye. Councillor Nordyke absent. Mayor Bennett. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. And Barney. Next, Barney, you're busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, a bit, a bit. Okay, this one is, I move to amend the original motion to rezone and redesignate the property at 255 College Drive Northwest that is proposed to be rezoned to multiple family one on map 170 and redesignated to multifamily residential on map 142 to the single family residential zone and designation. Second. And uh, the reasoning for this is this property uh, where the West Salem Life Church is, is currently zoned as PE, which is for public education. And it is no longer, its primary use is no longer a school. So it's no longer a permitted use. So it needed to be uh, changed. Um, based on a lot of different conversations, we looked at a whole bunch of different options and actually the uh, single family residential allows uh, the house of worship to be there and it also gives the church some flexibility. So I feel this is the best, uh, the best option moving forward. Okay, any questions? This is, this is in line with what we heard from neighbors in that area, is that correct? Yeah, that, because they feel that there's already multifamily housing there uh, there isn't the infrastructure, the roads, the storm uh, water drainage, et cetera, for multifamily. Um, and um, yeah, they, they would just prefer. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, okay. Any, uh, any discussion? Will uh, if the recorder please call the roll? Councillor Stapleton absent. Councillor Anderson? Aye. Councillor Phillips? Aye. Councillor Leung? Aye. Councillor Gonzalez? Aye. Councillor Hoy? Aye. Councillor Nordyke absent. Councillor Barney? Aye. Mayor Bennett? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Councillor Anderson. Councillor Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Here we go with another one. I move to amend the original motion to remove the properties on both sides of Commercial Street Southeast from Superior Street South to Jarris Avenue and properties on only the east side of Commercial Street Southeast between Jarris Avenue and the McGillcrest Street that are proposed to be rezoned to MU-3 on proposed zone map change or zone change map 124 from ordinance number 10-22 and to direct staff to create a new ordinance and schedule a separate public hearing to consider rezoning those properties to MU-2. Second. Second by Hoy. Okay, Councilor, 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as is pretty obvious from the other motions, all of these are a series of motions to the R Salem plan that are really brought forth by neighborhood concerns in each area that are subject to the uh, uh, R Salem. And we've, uh, uh, an issue seems to be a lot about the mixed use, mixed use one, two, and three. And those basically the uh, requirements are uh, the how high they can be. And um, this is the result of many discussions among SCAN, which is a neighborhood group on, on Commercial Street and the city staff and their uh, city councilor, uh, who is I. Um, and uh, um, SCAN has always been concerned historically with commercial and um, uh, Liberty Street that run right through the neighborhood and used to be just regular residential streets and now they're pretty much uh, arterials and um, this was a uh, uh, an arrangement reached after much discussion among all the parties and it is a, a proposal that SCAN came up with after long discussion. So I think this is good. It, it recognizes that Commercial Street is more of a commercial street now, but it allows for mixed use and it uh, uh, tries to uh, come to the best uh, uh, weighing between higher mixed use and lower mixed use. All right, thank you very much. Any uh, question? Yes, Councillor Phillips. Sorry, guys. Um, so uh, thank you, Mayor Bennett. Thank you, Councillor Anderson, for making the motion. Um, so help me understand what the default is um, by changing the amendment. I understand that they, uh, the scan and the neighbors don't want the increased height with uh, the new zone, um, the three. Um, what is now the default um, after we, if we go ahead and, you know, adopt the, the comprehensive plan? Because I, I got the sense that you're, we're doing a public hearing in future to make sure that the the um, zone two is better. But let me under, like, kind of explain what the default is in the meantime. Okay. Well, here, here's um, uh, what happened. There was, uh, in order for this change to happen, there has to be requisite amount of public notice. And there was public notice given, but the public notice given was, we are changing it to MU3. So all the affected property owners on Commercial Street uh, reacted to a proposal to change it to MU3. Now that the neighborhood group and other interested groups and the staff and this counselor are proposing to uh, amend it to MU2, we have to go through that public hearing process again to give everybody uh, a, a chance to comment on it. And that's basically why, why it is. What, what's the underlying, I think what the counselor is asking is what's the underlying, where will it be Okay. Uh, tomorrow morning, what will okay. be its zoning? Do you know? No, I don't. And maybe okay. the staff can answer that. But but I will tell you that the the concern from SCAN uh, uh, was yeah. that it's too high, it's too much, it's too it's too large. And there was a lot of discussion about what the north end of it is, what the south end of it is. And this uh, proposal from uh, uh, McGillcrest to, to Jarris is the one that everybody came out in and saying that is the area that could be a little higher uh, uh, because it's closer to the city. So that's what's going on. And I don't know if Eunice or- Eunice Lee is here, we can okay. call her up. Yeah, Eunice. Eunice, could you answer Trevor oh. Phillips' question? Sure, the majority of those um, properties are commercial retail today. So they would remain that until we brought an ordinance to have a hearing just on those properties to consider it mixed use to, as Councillor Anderson was saying. That and, and my follow up, my, my next question would be, um, we, we've made some changes, but none of these changes, with, there's relatively few blocks involved in these changes, affects our housing inventory writ, at large, right? Okay. okay. And if, Mr. Mayor, if I yeah. could add, it does affect our housing policy because mixed use will allow more, allow housing on the upper story. So it adds more housing and it adds more dense housing along um, a bus corridor and also close to the city, the, the city core. All those are good things and all those are things that we have supported through the R Salem process. And if I may follow up, yeah, I concede the point. Um, absolutely, the R Salem in, in total is a massive uh, step forward and improves housing and zoning throughout the city. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't, you know, making any big changes, but these are just a few blocks. So yeah, I think it's, SCAN's done a lot of work to reach out to us. So yeah. Okay. 
Very there are good. only big changes to the people who are right next to it. Very good. Okay, any further discussion? The recorder, please call the roll. Councilor Anderson. Aye. Councilor Phillips. Aye. Councilor Leung. Aye. Councilor Gonzalez. Aye. Councilor Hoy. Aye. Councilor Nordyke absent. Councilor Barney. Aye. Councilor Stapleton absent. Mayor Bennett. Aye. Okay, motion passes. And First now back to Councilor Barney. Okay. Okay, last one for me here. Okay. <laughs> this one is, I move to amend the original motion to direct staff to address the traffic issues on Wallace Road Northwest, including the congestion relief task force recommendations in the upcoming update to the Salem Transportation System Plan. Second. Second by Hoy. Okay, the reasoning for this is, uh, in the supplemental staff memorandum that is included with the R Salem project, uh, there's a line toward the end of it that said that staff intends to address traffic issues on Wallace Road Northwest. And it came up and that particular line came up in discussion at the Neighborhood Association. And uh, we really feel that Wallace Road congestion needs to be addressed and needs, we need to follow the congestion relief task force recommendations. So instead of the word intends, the neighborhood association and I would like to ensure that the traffic issues on Wallace Road will be addressed in the PSP. Great. Anyone want to oppose that? <laughs> okay, any questions? All right, if the recorder please call the roll. Councilor Phillips. Aye. Councilor Leung. Aye. Councilor Gonzalez. Aye. Councilor Hoy. Aye. Councilor Nordyke absent. Councilor Varney. Aye. Councilor Stapleton absent. Councilor Anderson. Aye. Mayor Bennett. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Councilor Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And that, I believe, concludes the amendments uh, that I've been made aware of by staff. So I would like to speak to the original motion, if I could, or the original, I should say yeah. the amended motion, the six-time amended motion. I don't know if I've ever had a motion amended six times. I but I think how you, orderly that was, too. I thought that was really well done. Thank you very much for putting that together. Well, that's thanks to staff, I should say. Um, and I just want to say that, you know, for, for those watching, you saw us go through a series of amendments. And really what that was, in my way of looking at it, is some just fine-tuning to a, an amazing body of work that's taken literally years of staff time uh, to put together uh, the R. Salem project that is really going to take this city into the next decade and the decade beyond that. And I think it's really uh, remarkable work that's been accomplished here. Uh, we have an amazing staff who led this effort in our planning department, uh, Eunice and Austin, and, and of course, with the under leadership of Lisa and Norm. And uh, this is really going to reshape how our city goes forward in, in a really good way. And I'm really proud to have been involved in this work. The public outreach that was conducted during this process was nothing short of remarkable. And actually at our last meeting, we had a recognition of that by DLCD. And so I think that that, that also is something we need to uh, be very proud of because the, the, the just given the pandemic and just the sheer volume of outreach was truly remarkable. And I think this is, this R. Salem project is something that everybody on council, but everybody in our community can be proud of. And I'm very happy to support it. Yeah, I really second you on that, Councillor. This is one of the really tremendous pieces of work. This has been, I, I think the first time this was done was back 40, probably 40 years ago, the comprehensive plan. And then it's just been piecemeal update to have this. This serves as a basis for everything that comes next relative to the growth of this city, whether it's a climate action plan, transportation study, where you ride your bike, where you walk, where you build a home. This is a remarkable piece of work. And I, I uh, had the honor to present to the staff that worked this, Austin, uh, Lisa, and uh, 
Eunice uh, this past week, they received an award for the level of transparency that had been done with this. This was done so totally in public. It really was a remarkable, and it's part of the reason we haven't had a lot of uh, folks at our public hearings and a very little for a, a plan this sweeping to go through this smoothly is absolutely remarkable. I think each of you know that. It, it, uh, it really is the kind of thing that can just get lost in the weeds. And these guys kept us out of the weeds. They did a fantastic job, I think. Uh, congratulations to them for their work and to the council for the work it's done on uh, fine tuning it. Councilor Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I agree with the comments of, of you and of Cal, uh, Council President Hoy. I'd just like to add a couple things. Uh, this, overall, this plan is fantastic. I think there are some uh, concerns about transportation and, and whether some particular intersection is congested or isn't congested. And that, to me, is not what we need to look at here in the R. Salem plan, because we are coming up with the transportation system plan that is going to be reviewed. So just like Councillor Varney uh, made her motion in terms of that, and you know, uh, permissive became mandatory, intend to shell, uh, I think that there are a lot of other issues that relate to the transportation system plan that fit within the rubric of our Salem, but will need to be considered more as we move on into the transportation system plan. Um, you know, there was a the talk about Wallace Road, well, there's the, then the talk about Marine Drive and where that comes out. And there's other issues with the downtown congestion task force also. The council has heard me talk about the Salem streetcar system at various uh, public meetings, and that's another part of the transportation system plan, which uh, I have been told by uh, both Julie Warnicky and and the folks we've already mentioned in the in the planning uh, department, community development department, that all that fits in and should be discussed with the transportation system plan. So uh, I look forward to a more robust discussion of transportation effects of this. And I do not think, and I'm looking at, uh, well, I'm not looking at, but I'm asking city, the, the city attorney if I need to make any kind of motion that we shall do this or if it really is covered under the rubric of reviewing the transportation system plan. I think it is. You're, you're correct, Council Anderson. The motion isn't necessary. Okay, thank you very much. Very good. Okay. Well, this will be, uh, I think, counselors for gener a couple of generations <laughs> will look at this uh, and uh, really applaud the work you've done on this. So it's great. Okay, if the recorder, please call. Oh, uh, Phillips has his hand oh I'm sorry, there. Trevor, yeah. what? what's up? Yeah, I just wanted to, to add my two cents. Um, this is historic. There's so many good things in terms of housing and, and our built city infrastructure. I agree that this is generational. I mean, this is what the city of Salem is. Um, but beyond just the zoning, the policy changes that are included in this document are really exciting. So there's there's so much in this that we will get to benefit from in the years moving forward. Um, it's not just the zoning, but the policy changes that come with it. So I'm excited. I appreciate staff, all other my colleagues, everybody who's been involved in this. This is truly historic. I'm really excited. Okay. All right. The recorder, please call a roll. Councilor Leon. Aye. Councillor Gonzalez? Aye. Councillor Hoy? Aye. Councillor Nordyke absent. Councillor Varney? Aye. Councillor Stapleton absent. Councillor Anderson? Aye. Councillor Phillips? Aye. Mayor Bennett? Aye. Motion passes. Great. Do you want to take a five minute break or do you want to finish this up? Okay. I'm good either way. Okay. We'll go back to three. No, I think we're still on 5B, Mr. Mayor. Are we on 5B? Just a sec. I yeah. turned the page too quickly, I guess. Ah, oh, that's right. Go ahead, Councillor. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Mr. I didn't Mayor. mean to overlook that one. No. I move a uh, city council adopt resolution number. 2022-39, modifying the council policy on consideration of feeble waiver requests. I'll second it. 
Thank you. And, and for those watching who are concerned, I will have a second motion coming up that I believe will at least, uh, I think will significantly address some of the current concerns that have been raised, but that'll be a following motion. Uh, but so I just wanted to chat for just a moment about this. You know, one of the things that we directed staff to do is to come up with a policy that helps uh, get us out of the business of making political decisions on what are really an administrative function. And I believe that the policy that the staff came up with largely does that. I don't know if Mr. Atchison wants to comment at all, but I know he's here and available if we need him. Mr. Atchison. I'm here to answer questions, but I have no comments. No advice here. Okay. Councilor Leon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wasn't sure where I was supposed to um, mention this, so I, I guess this would be better to better plan than not at all. Um, so I have a potential conflict of interest, so I'm going to have to abstain from voting on this um, issue. Okay. Councilor Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I appreciate Councillor Hoy's comments, and uh, I would be kind of interested in what is the issue, the second motion that he's going to make, because this comes up all the time. You know, we keep saying, okay, we're going to have the fee policy out of our hands. We're going to set general broad things, and the staff's going to determine. But We've got lots of emails and lots of people coming and testifying here today that saying we don't like what the staff is determining. And is the staff determining it under our policy or do they think the staff is going rogue? I just don't know. So if if it's appropriate, sure. you, uh, Council President Hoy, what is the subject of your second motion? Uh, thank you, Councillor, for the question. I appreciate that. I was waiting for somebody to ask. I feel like it was appropriate to talk about it earlier. Um, so the, the subject would 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 direct staff to uh, reach an agreement with the or to, in, to discuss with the with groups like the West Salem Lions Club to draft the, an agreement where a club has contributed in a in a significant way to the infrastructure of a park or, or a significant amount of work where we could come up with an agreement. We have existing agreements in other areas that would allow for this and essentially would allow for a, a, basically a trade for the work to uh, relieve the fee. The other issue that um, I would like to include is, and perhaps I should have done that in my first motion, but it's also to waive the fees when it's an official neighborhood association event, um, I would like to waive those fees as well, because I think that our neighborhoods are such a huge part of our city outreach and the community building. I think it's important that we uh, not charge neighbor actual neighborhood association events uh, for, um, for use of the city facilities. Thank you, uh, Council President Hoy. I guess uh, um, I understand that completely, and I think what what in effect you're saying with your first motion is we need to look at the historical uh, uh, precedent set by any individual group, and I think that's what the Lions Clubs are, uh, West Salem Lions Club is, is disturbed about. We did all this work, we did all this stuff, we moved forward on it, and now you're going to charge us three times what you were going to charge us before. And well, I think it's appropriate to look back historically and see what any in organization has contributed to the uh, the area for which they're seeking uh, a, a waiver or the area which they might have to pay something. And it's clear they're not against paying anything. I just think things have um, uh, escalated more than they should have. Yeah. Councilor Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And in fact, I'm prepared to make my amend amendments to my original motion. Um, so I move to amend the motion to include city recognized neighborhood associations to the definition of qualified nonprofit. Okay. Second. Second by for, Yeah, for all the reasons I stated, I think we need to encourage participation with our neighborhood groups. And I think this will help get us farther along. I will have a second amendment once we vote on that one. Any discussion on that? Uh, Chris, the one question I have on this one is Will that apply primarily to use of their neighborhood park or would it be everybody can use 
uh, Riverfront Park, how will that how will that work or other facilities? Uh, well, I think it would apply to any facility, but I think generally our neighborhood associations really only use neighbor or use facilities within their neighborhood yeah. or at least okay. very nearby. But I would uh, I wouldn't want to restrict that if they felt they needed a bigger venue, for instance, in you know in my ward that we don't have a lot of really large parks, so you might have to go to Deer Park or something. And so I wouldn't want to restrict that, but certainly the intent is neighborhoods meet in their neighborhoods. So. Okay. okay. Any discussion? Councilor Barney, did you? Thank you. I, I just wanted a clarification in regards to the fee waiver for uh, neighborhood associations. Is it for, a, is it a complete fee waiver or are neighborhood associations to be uh, taken under the same 20% uh, like a non nonprofit? Which, hey, which one? Thank you. I apologize for the confusion I created with my imprecise words. Uh, it would include them in the 20% reduction. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Any any further discussion? Okay. Reporter would call the roll on the amendment. Councillor Gonzalez. Hi. Councillor Hoy. Aye. Councillor Nordyke is absent. Councillor Varney. Aye. Councillor Stapleton absent. Councillor Anderson. Aye. Councillor Phillips? Aye. Councillor Leung? She's going to pass on this one, I think, if I recall. Thank you. Um, let's see, Mayor Bennett? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Okay, now we're back to Councillor Hoy's amended motion, right? I have one more right. amendment. One more? One more amendment. I move to direct staff to work with the West Salem Lions Club to draft a use of agreement for the West Salem Park located on Rosemont Avenue to allow the club use of the stage and park similar to the city's agreement with the Salem Cricket Club for the cricket field at Stevens Yoshikai Park. Second. Second. Okay. Just to, to clarify, Councillor Hoy, the, the motion regarding the fee waiver policy is still there. This is actually a separate motion, not an amendment to that motion. Not sure. Say that again, please. Well, you you just re, your motion actually just replaced the original amended motion. So I'm assuming you want this oh, okay. as a separate motion and not an amendment to the previous amended motion. I, Apologies. I thought I was just doing, I thought doing this that too. Go ahead, Chris. You want to clarify? I can so I'll withdraw the the second amendment and create a, a second separate motion. Is that what you're saying, Dan? That's correct. And we can just consider it as a separate motion. You don't need to okay. do it again. Okay. Yeah, a separate motion. Thank you for that clarification. Hey, let's go. So we'll go back to the uh, original motion amended that we were working on, right? Dan. So uh, you can have more than one motion on the floor at one time. So Councilor okay. Hoy has just made a separate motion regarding uh, the West Salem Lions Club, and we you can act on that now. Then go back to the amended motion. Okay. Which would you like to have go first, Chris? Let's just go ahead and do the West Salem Lions Club, okay. get it off the table, and then go back to the original. Uh, okay. Okay, we're going to vote on the West Salem Lions Club motion. Councillor Hoy. Aye. Councillor Nordyke, absent. Councillor Barney. Aye. Councillor Stapleton, absent. Councillor Anderson. Aye. Councillor Phillips. Aye. Councillor Leung. Is the same potential conflict? Yes. Yeah. Councillor Gonzalez? Aye. Mayor Bennett? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Chris, we'll go to your original. Thank you. So we're back to the uh, original amended motion that would include uh, the neighborhood associations in the 20% reduction. And I would just say uh, for my colleague from Ward 5, if you were interested in changing that to uh, have it a total waiver for neighborhood associations, now would be the time to make that amendment. So I'm um, not sure if Councilor Gonzalez is interested in that or not, um, but this would be the time to do that. Thank you, uh, Council uh, President Hoy. So you're saying this would be a good time to amend the first motion? 
Yeah, you could, you could, uh, if you wanted to say, I changed it to a 20% reduction for neighborhood associations. If you wanted to change it to, so it's a complete fee waiver, you could do so now. Or if you wanted to just say for pending applications or to address that specific issue out in your ward that I know we have at Northgate Park, now would be the time to do that. Yeah, th thank you, Mayor. Then, then I would like to amend the motion to include a fee waiver for the, for the uh, um, fun Fridays events that were already proposed. So going forward, I understand and, and I appreciate the staff's work on this uh, new proposal because it does get us up having to play favors, you know, but um, the current group, which is even not even a nonprofit, really it's just neighbors coming together. Um, they were under the assumption there was a plan to get it waived. And so here we are, and they've actually started their event last Friday. So um, it, the emotion is to, um, amend the current motion to allow the fee waiver for the Homa Neighborhood Council Fun Friday events. Second. Second by Hoy. Uh, the one question I have uh, to understand it then, so a neighborhood group moving forward that wants to use their local park for an event will pay a fee less 20% from the, the administrative fee. What's that mean, Robert, in terms of the cost to a neighborhood association to have a picnic in the park so I, I think hi robert chandler assistant director of public works i think i need a little clarification from councillor hoy's uh intention i heard neighborhood association so it's a neighborhood association event you want the neighborhood association to be eligible for a 20 percent reduction as a nonprofit. was that correct Councilor uh, hoy yes so the event that councillor gonzalez is talking about one of the uh uh, now five fee waivers currently in the queue. This is from the uh, Holman Northgate Neighborhood Family Council. It's actually not a registered uh, nonprofit for the state of Oregon, but they're doing events uh, in support of their neighbors in uh, Northgate Park. And they've got, I think, four events. I can check here, uh, two, three, four, four events scheduled in July, um, and they've asked for a fee waiver. And you view that this, this amendment covers that? you will not be charging them a fee, is that correct? That's how Councillor Hoy put it, yes. Or I'm sorry, Councillor Gonzalez asked for a fee waiver specifically for the Holman Northgate Neighborhood Family Council. Is that correct, Councillor Gonzalez? That's correct. Okay. And we can do that. What, what I, I guess what I'm asking you, uh, Ms. Chandler, is sure. what, what is the impact of this on a neighborhood association uh, coming to you to use their neighborhood park. Uh, what what will the fee be like for them then? What what kind of money are we talking about? For a neighborhood association, for an official neighborhood association yeah. event. Right. Um, I'm looking at the uh, fee schedule now, and the fee schedule, uh, the facility use fees are waived for scheduled public business meetings conducted by an organization. So if it's not a business meeting, but it's like a, a, a gathering in the neighbors supported by a neighbor association, then Councilor Hoy's motion would give them a 20% discount. What's that mean in terms of costs? Um, uh, it would depend on the facility. Um, I could Pick tell you- a for facility and give me a cost. Yes, sir. The facility, for example, if a neighbor association wanted to use the amphitheater at West Salem Park is $153 per event, 20% off that be a little over $35 or a little less than $35. Discount. If uh, the neighborhood association wants, like in Inglewood, wants to use Inglewood Park for a festival and it's done by the neighborhood association, what will that cost? I don't have that fee schedule in front of me, that okay, number. But each park has its own fee. Is that each, the deal? Each facility has its own fee, whether it's a, a reservable area, a pavilion, um, a, a shelter. Okay. okay. Sorry. That's okay. Councilor Hoy? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think, and, and please correct me if I'm mistaken, uh, Mr. Chandler, but there are only certain events that actually trigger a fee. One is sound amplification. One is actually reserving a facility within a within a park. If you're just going there and using the park, your neighborhood is just going to have a picnic or whatever. You're not reserving a facility. There's no fee, as I understand it. You can just go use the park. That's like exactly, a, that is that is exactly correct. If, okay. if, if it's not a reservable fee, there's no there's no fee. Council has no fee for it. Okay, good. 
Will that be shown on your fee schedule as you put it out, Robert, to make sure everybody understands what they're looking at? Uh, what would you like me to show? I'm sorry. No, I'm just wondering how it, how that fact is demonstrated to the neighborhood groups as they may want to use uh, local facilities. Are they, they just call you up or, or just well, don't do call, it? Don't call me up, but if you want, if you have a specific facility that you want to use, uh, Riverfront Park, the pavilion, uh, uh, Woodman Sea Park is completely Pringle pavilion. Park. Pringle Park, um, or actually uh, Pringle Hall there. Yeah. Then call Public Works um, and get the uh, fee schedule and the dates that are available, and we'll tell you what the fee is. Okay. And our website's got a good, a very good uh, set of information and links of how you can get the fees, how you can make reservations, fill out the form, what you have to pay. Okay. Councilor Anderson. Thank you. At the risk of sounding like a lawyer, I heard somebody say, I think it was Mr. Chandler, say that if you have a business meeting, there is no charge for anything. Well, I will tell you that a number of neighborhood groups have business meetings followed by a potluck, business yeah. meetings followed by some sort of party. That happens all the time. I know what happens in SCAN where we use Pringle Park, and I know what happens in Cessna where some of the parks over in Cessna are used. So it seems to me that as a practical matter, this is not going to affect neighborhood groups very much because they can have a business meeting for 15 minutes and then move on to, to, to something else. Is that a correct interpretation? That's how I would interpret it, yeah. Okay. You've got a business as part of it and then a potluck afterwards, more, more power to you. Okay, great, thank you. You bet. Okay, anything else? Mayor, excuse me, could I have, uh, would it be possible to have Councillor uh, Gonzalez restate his amendment? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, Councillor Gonzalez, could you restate your uh, motion? Make my best attempt, Mayor, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I move we amend the current motion to waive the Hama neighborhood Family Council's Fun Fridays events waiver uh, fee completely. Okay, and we have a second on, on that. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay then, uh, Amy? Is that do it? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. And this is in response to Mr. Chandler being uncertain about the Inglewood Park Festival. I just got a text from uh, Lynn Takata of NEN who says uh, they pay over $1,300 to use Inglewood Park. She was not, I, I didn't read that as a complaint. It's just, here's yeah. a fact. Here's what they pay. Yeah. $1,300 Inglewood Festi uh, Festival. So what under the current, under this motion, this can get to council as a waiver in the future. Isn't that right? I mean, if it, if somebody wants to bring it up and bring it to council, can it get to the council? For I suppose it could, but under Mr. Chandler's 20%, they'd be, yeah. we, that'd be $1,300 less $260. So it'd be $1,040 by my, yeah. my math. Is that correct, Mr. Chandler? Your math is correct. I don't have the fee schedule for that facility yeah. for the break. Right. Yeah, right. the math is good. So well, it's a so, park. It's not a facility. It's just a park, right? Or I thought you were talking about pavilions and buildings. What? I don't know what they're reserving in Inglewood. I'm sorry, I, I don't have that yeah. that information handy. Okay. I don't know. Is everybody ready to vote on this then, or do you want to take it up further, or what would you like to do? Chris, go ahead. I'm ready to vote. Okay. Anybody else? I was okay, revising. This is again. the original motion with the West Salem, with the Lions Club, or is it the? We dealt with Lions Club separately. Okay. So this is just the original motion. That was the, of with, the two motions we were allowing on the floor, okay. So this is the original motion with the language of the neighborhood associations and also Councilor Gonzalez's fee waiver included. Okay, Amy, do you wanna call the roll? 
Councillor Nordyke absent. Councillor Varney? Aye. Councillor Stapleton absent. Councillor Anderson? Aye. Councillor Phillips? Aye. Councillor Leung? He won't be voting. Oh, correct. Thank you. Councillor Gonzalez? Aye. Councillor Hoy? Aye. Mayor Bennett? Aye. A motion passes. Or the emo or is that the amendment passes? I can't remember now. No, I think we're good. Okay. But the entire motion as amended passed. Okay, good. Can I ask like a, a point of order kind of question? There were two motions. Did mo both motions pass or? Yeah, yeah. And this this thing uh, of letting two on the floor, you might want to not do that again, but that's what's happening. Okay, we're done. Okay, so it's it's concluded. I get it, thanks. Okay. All right. 3.2a now. Nope, we're on 5c. 5c, God, I can't seem to turn these pages right. Just a sec. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay, 5C is the new flag. Who's the staff? That's, that's me. Hi, uh, Lisa Anderson, I'll be your planning administrator. Um, so you might remember that uh, Brian McKinley, former vice uh, president of planning commission who was here, was very passionate about a, a, a new city flag and held a contest and has finalists and those went to planning commission and earlier this year, they recommended that the city council consider adopting a new flag. And the city council um, asked that it come back as an item that could be voted on instead of an information report. So it is before you again tonight. And like I said, uh, Mr. McKinley is here to answer any questions you might have. Hey, now does he have a video he wanted to show us as part of your I couldn't get that open. Okay. Uh, maybe, uh, Brian, do you have a video that, did you want to try to share the video that was sent by email today? The, um, can you hear me? Great. Yes. Um, yes, I probably could show the video. It's very quick. Um, if I can share my screen. There we go. I haven't done this much. I'm sorry. Is that is that in your view, everyone? Yes, it's there. It's there. Okay. The the sound might or might not work, but it's not really so important. You want to tell us what's going on here? Sure. Those are just these are the four finalists for the flag. Okay. And that's it. I just wanted you to see them flying in the wind because a good flag is always best flying in the wind, as as you probably know. Um, so that's basically it. There's, you know, nothing too exciting there. Um, I believe there's a question about the blossom on one of the um, applicants, yes. and that was. So let me once again share a screen, and I will discuss that a little bit. I, I think part of it was uh, understanding the colors. Yeah. There we go. The, oh, can you guys see this? Yes. Good. So when I sent this off to, again, we this went through many different processes, judging public comment, uh, uh, you know, a poll through the, the city uh, paper. Um, when it went to NAVA, the North American Vexillological Association, uh, being the flag nerds they are, that we are, that I am, uh, they said, well, the flag on the right, the one with the gold in the, cent in the center and the more pinkish is fine, but it would be kind of a bit hard to see flying in the wind. So, okay, they gave a suggestion uh, that they modify it to this pink that is on the um, my left. I'm not sure if it's on your right or not. So the concept is, here's the, here's the difference is, um, the original version was a gold star for the capital and the pink for the cherry blossoms. The one on the left is a cherry blossom with the same star yet the cherry blossom is cherry color as opposed to cherry blossom pink so it's a weird distinction but that's kind of what they came up with um as the city council 
you can choose to do whatever you want. Um, you have the four finalists, and if this was the one you wanted to choose, you could choose either version. Um, you can choose any of the other four that you've seen. Um, if if you remember, we have the uh, finalists there. Um, and I'm ready for questions. Councilor Hoy. Uh, thank Hi, you. you this for, would you conduct this for a few minutes? Will do, will do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Mr. McKinley, for your passion for flags and for bringing this forward in the process you went through. I do prefer the one that we were just looking at in terms of uh, the cherry. I think the cherry blossom flag is the strongest of the of the four. I, I am wondering though about the. I'm not particularly fond of the red, and I'm not particularly fond of the original pink, but maybe something in between. But I do think that's a really strong design, and I think it's uh, it's kind of a you know, it's kind of goes along with the city's branding with cherry blossom. And so um, is there, would there be an option to just adjust that color a little bit? Because frankly, the, the red, I don't associate cherry red with the cherry blossoms. Those are kind of two different things. So I was just curious, could we, but I don't particularly like the gold star either. I like the, the more subtle star that's depicted in it with the one. So without trying to relitigate your entire process, is that an option or? What do you say to that? Anything is the option. Anything you want to do. So if I, if that's the one you like, if you decided that neither, neither of these three were quite what you're looking for, and that the uh, cherry blossom flag, uh, in some version, was what you want, what I would do is I would at some point tonight vote on that being the finalist somehow. And I don't know how we'd work this. Uh, you know, Lisa would know how to do this. Uh, we vote on that one as the finalist. That is the flag, but we have to revise it and then we would come up with multiple versions. I take your suggestions. I would redo it and I would submit to you multiple different versions. And you would decide you would pare down from that. And then Excellent. once again, vote again sometime. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, Councilor Anderson. Thank you. Council president Hoy. Uh, this is fantastic work, Brian. Thank you very much. And I don't know why, as the child of the 60s, I'm thinking of the phrase, let your freak flag fly. But here we are. What does the V stand for in NAVA? I didn't quite understand it. Is that some term relating to flags? The vexillological word? Yes. So I'm vexed by it. No, yeah, that's great. Um, that's a good question. Um, at the head of every Roman army, they had a standard. Um, it would mostly be a square. It wouldn't be a flag like we're thinking. But, you know, you've seen the eagle and the little thing, SPQR, and the, that was called the vexel. Okay. And so vexillology is the study of vexels, the study of flags, That because vexel is, a, you know, the Latin term for flag. So, yeah, very good. Okay. Then who is the commission judge? You said uh, uh, the the one with looks like a jail to me is the commission job's favorite. That's number B. Yeah. Yeah, this was the commission. This was the original judging commission. It was a panel of about 15 people that went through two different judgments, and we narrowed it down from 286 to uh, 21. This was the judge's favorite out of all of the uh, submittals, and it so it got to go on to the final four. Okay. And are the, were the 15 judges uh, um, uh, Salemites or were they vexologists? Uh, we had a mix of mostly Salemites, a uh, very diverse group of, of all genders and, um, you know, from all over the uh, spectrum there. Uh, and it was mostly Salemites, but we also had some professionals. We had some or some Oregonians, uh, but professional uh type people it was a quite a diverse group and i could i could provide the list at some point oh, if needed oh that's fine now I, I i just am a little curious as to how we're going to do this are somebody going to move one flag and we're going to vote it up and down or are we going to do a vote like we do for i don't know planning commissioners and each we're, each counselor is going to vote for one of the four and then whichever gets the most votes is it i don't know i i'm looking at i think you get I think that's an excellent question, Councillor Anderson, uh, and probably one for our attorney. But I do have to just say that I'm disappointed that apparently you've never watched Sheldon Cooper's Fun with Flags, <laughs> where you would learn you would learn all about the term vexillology. So I just wanted to throw that out there and a little shout out to for Brian. Anyway, uh, Councillor Leon. 
Thank you. Um, a quick question about the, the flag color. It's, I'm reading through, reading through the description and maybe it's just the way that it came out printed. Um, it doesn't look like my understanding from the first flag, for example, the cherry um, blossom with the uh, star in the middle. Is it supposed to be like a pink, like the cherry blossom pink or a different shade of that? Yeah. So let me um, share my screen, if I may, really quickly again, so I can give you a better. Uh, there we go. So, yes, the one with the pink and the gold star, um, as you can read, this was take away the word modified version. The quoted part is what the original creator stated was uh, their intent. The cherry blossom was pink for a cherry blossom. The gold star was for Salem as the capital. The vexillology group changed it to a cherry blossom that was cherry color, not cherry blossom color. So it's a bit of an odd change, but that's what they went with. And I, we made the distinction that when you make a change to a flag that we will send, we will send forward the modified version. Thank you. I just was a little confused with reading the description and seeing the color. Other questions or uh, did our city attorney want to weigh in on the process? Um, Dan Atchison, city attorney. Uh, Council, you, you, the, the world is your oyster. So if you wanted to uh, have someone make a motion on one flag and if that motion passes, you're done. Um, otherwise you could uh, uh, do a, uh, I'm, I'm going to put the city recorder to her test, but you could <laughs> do a uh, sort of a rolling mo motion where you're voting on each flag and whoever, whichever one gets the most votes would uh, be your winner. And then of course, if you're going to ask for changes, um, then the motion would be to, to refer it back to staff with X flag uh, to make those changes that you would request. Thank you. So uh, it'll be my intent, and of course others can have their own opinions as well. My intent would be to move the cherry blossom flag, refer it back to staff for uh, some major, maybe minor adjustments uh, as Brian had outlined and then come back to us for final adoption. That would be my intent, um, but I don't know what other people are thinking. So I'd like to hear uh, if that's kind of where, where others are at as well. Councilor Anderson. Thank you. Um, I, I'd suggest potentially going another way and having each counselor you know, vote for one of these. And then if there's one that is clearly ahead, we're done. If there are two that, you know, we're almost like ranked choice voting here. If there are two that stand out, then we vote uh, between those two. Because I, I will tell you right now that I like the uh, uh, number D. Uh, um, I think it's bold, and I like uh, it. Looks like a capital. It doesn't look like a jail. And it it to me it says that's a city or something. We're looking at at least a bunch of buildings as opposed to a flower. My concern with that one is that it it doesn't look like our capital. It looks a little bit like our capital, but not really. There's yeah. no gold man on top. Yeah. So that was my concern with it. It doesn't really look like our capital. It's, I mean, it's kind of gets there, but not really. Uh, Mr. McKinley, did you have a comment? Yeah. So I can put up the ABCD for you to reference as you vote, if you'd like. And again, if you like the one with the capital, we could slap a golden man on there if you wanted to, um, some sort of a version of that. Again, if you, the one you pick doesn't have to be, that's it, you're done. You can pick with the caveat that you will then do modification. I will do modifications for you and then submit the final list for final vote. Understood. Thank you for that. Councilor Phillips. Yeah, a uh, question for Brian or staff. Uh, how many, res do we know how many respondents there were to the, the local newspaper poll? I do not know how many respondents, but there was um, the last number I got was a verbal number, thousands. So we had thousands and that doesn't necessarily mean it's all Salemites. It could be, you know, whoever gets for some reason the Salem paper, but it was quite a number of people. So thousands. Okay. That, that's helpful. I mean, um, so um, I just tell what I'm thinking. Um, I would like us to hopefully get the motion right the first time. Um, and, and I would kind of probably support uh, city council president, Chris Hoy's motion. 
Um, but uh, Tom, my second choice is D, which I think is how the polling went as well. Uh, although D, D and the set third choice were real close. Um, but choice A was the, the you know, vast majority compared to the other ones. It actually had a majority of the poll respondents. Um, so I, I like it, but like Councillor Hoy said, I would like modifications uh, on A to get the color grading correct. And if you know the, the rest of my colleagues want to go with uh, Anderson's choice of D, uh, getting the, the capital a little bit tuned up would be my preference. So I, I'm, I would prefer A, B, D is my second choice. Those are my thoughts. Mr. Council President, why, I, don't, I haven't heard anybody say they like B or C. Perhaps we just thought a vote between D and, and A. That's certainly an option. Council Varney? <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, my preference is the cherry blossom one with the going back and maybe revising the pink a little bit. I like the idea of the north-south blue stripe uh, being the Willamette. My concern about D is if we decide to make the man on top gold, <laughs> it's going to look like a cupcake. <laughs> and I'm not sure that quite, <laughs> quite works. Anyway, that's all. Thanks. Thank you. And, and my thought about, I mean, of course, the dome is such a recognizable feature in our city, but we're really trying to create a city flag here, not a state flag. And that's my that's why I lean away from those depicting the the dome and and towards something that's more uniquely Salem yet gives um, gives uh, homage to get with a star. So that's those that's my thought process. Uh, Councillor Barney, are you up again, or did you not take your hand down? And Councillor Anderson, I move that the City Council vote between A and D for the city flag. Do we have second. a second? Yeah, I'll second it. Great. We have a second there from Councillor Phillips. Uh, you well, want to discuss it? Yeah, we've already discussed it. I mean, nobody has come on and says B or C is great. So if I think we're those are the two we're looking at, A to D. So let's just vote them up and down. I, and I'm I am quite uh, uh, I, I would say that the council discussion here has honored all the effort. Uh, and reflects all the effort that Mr. McKinley has put into doing this stuff because we spent a lot of time on this. And just a, yeah, just a quick question. So the A and D, but provided that we make the nominal adjustment. So we'll phrase the motion to include those tweaks. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. we would just be voting between the two, basically, rather yeah, than yeah. between four. Okay. Yeah. Other discussion? So as I understand the motion, we're voting to go forward with that process, but not actually making a choice yet. Is that correct, Mr. Atchison? Um, my understanding is that you're going to basically right now conduct two separate votes for A and D, and whichever one receives the most votes would be the selected flag, and then you would have a subsequent motion if there's changes requested for that flag. All right. I'm glad I asked. Mr. Thank you. Mr. McKinley, could you do me a favor and what, uh, could you point to, just so everybody's 100% clear, would you just point behind you to the flag that is we were calling A? Or put it up on the screen. That's great, too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're going to go between A and D. No? Yes. Those two. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So... Uh, the cherry blossom or the uh, capital dome and the green and the yellow and the blue. Those are our choices. Are we ready to go or do you want to talk about it some more? All those in favor, I guess we'll need to have, a, I'm sorry, the recorder will please call the roll. Those in favor of flag A. <laughs> Councillor Varney. Aye, on A. <laughs> Councillor Stapleton is absent. Councillor Anderson? No on A. Councillor Phillips? Aye on A. <laughs> Councillor Leon? Aye on A. Councillor Gonzalez? Aye on A. Councillor Hoy? Aye. Councillor Nordyke absent. Mayor Bennett? Aye on A. 
So as I understand it, we're going forward with uh, flag A, and then we're going to refer that, I guess, do we need another motion to refer it to staff now for modification, Mr. Atchison, or are we good to go here? Yes, please. And if you could specify what modifications you want. Okay. I move we adopt flag A and refer it back to staff for minor revisions, including adjustment of color from red to pink. I'll second, second. it. Do, I, do we need to talk about that more? Are we good? All those in favor? If, I'm sorry, if the recorder will please call the roll. Councillor Stapleton absent. Councillor Anderson? Aye. Councillor Phillips? Aye. Councillor Leung? Aye. Councillor Gonzalez? Aye. Councillor Hoy? Aye. Councillor Nordyk absent. Councillor Varney? Aye. Mayor Bennett? Aye. Motion passes, and thank you so much for your great work on this, Mr. McKinley, and also to Ms. Anderson Ogilvy. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, and I realize, as always, this isn't the most important thing in the world. There's so many more important things, but it's going to be a great banner for us to go forward with, and I um, look forward to helping you modify it, get it finalized. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Mr. Mayor, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Yeah, Brian, thank you very much. I don't know how long ago you came and talked to me about this, but it's been it's been years, it six, seems like now. Five, six, six? Five, six years, yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for persisting. Okay. The next one is the bond. 5D, Councilor Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move City Council adopt resolution number 2022-42, calling for a measure election to be held on November 8, 2022, to consider a $300 million general obligation bond to finance capital improvements and other capital costs. Second. Second by Phillips. Okay, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And this is going to, uh, we're going to actually be sending this to staff and we'll get one more shot at at the final language, once the once we make this vote, vote tonight, the attorney will come back with um, the actual uh, referral. But this is going to get that process started. I think this has been a, a really uh, important and robust conversation that we've had in getting to the place where I think all nine of us are comfortable, at least as I understand it, and are ready to enthusiastically support this. So I just uh, I'm ready to to get this thing moving. Council, or uh, Mr. Atchison. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Dan Atchison, City Attorney. Just um, so at this point, if the resolution passes, we will uh, draft the ballot title and um, pr provide notice in the Statesman Journal. We'll also provide a copy of it to City Council. That'll start an appeal period where uh, citizens can um, appeal the ballot title if they wish. Okay. We will also come back uh, to you hopefully at the next meeting with the explanatory statement, a draft has been provided just for your information. If you have concerns about the, the text and there was an addition tonight with a revised explanatory statement, we'll come back to you hopefully at the next meeting for uh, your adoption of that so that can be included in the package. Great, thank you. Uh, Councilor Anderson. Yes, yeah, so I'm all uh, uh, very much in favor of referring this bond measure. I do have some, um, wordsmithing sort of issues with the uh, explanatory statement. And I'll just uh, talk with you, uh, city attorney, some point in the next few days. Very good. And, and it, Dan, is that uh, uh, invited from counselors if they do have wordsmithing or other issues with the explanatory? Yes, statement? please, uh, please contact me. Um, right now, the, the statement is at bond council for their review for some of those requirements. But we obviously uh, uh, need to get it right and want your your input on that. Okay. Oh, Tom, did you? Uh, oh, I, I would just say, Dan, that all I'm really talking about is moving some moving a paragraph up closer to the top and then bolding right. some language. So I'm not right, asking. This is the idea that any of us can come in and yeah. share yeah. thoughts, if nothing yeah. else. Yeah. <clears throat> Including editorial thoughts. Uh, Councillor Phillips. 
Uh, yeah, this is, I mean, tonight, uh, just so many historic things with this bond. Um, it funds things that have never been funded before through bonds. Um, you know, we're getting money for parks. We're getting, you know, the majority of this is for infrastructure. Um, you know, having served on uh, SCATS, the local metropolitan organization, uh, you know, th this money goes by quickly. So this unique historic opportunity, um, I'm, I'm enthousi enthusiastically in support of this bond. It feels like, you know, the near unanimous support or unanimous support is coming from my colleagues. Um, there may have been some bumps along the way, but we got to a really, really good product um, that I think is going to be easy to, you know, relatively easy to convince the voters across Salem that this is needed. It was transparent. Um, it was well thought out. It's equitable. Um, and it, it helps uh, across Salem really move forward to our future. And, you know, if this doesn't go through, I'm genuinely concerned, you know, the impact it'll have on public safety, on infrastructure. You know, we're, we're getting the fire rigs updated. We're improving streets and sidewalks across the city. So this is just like, I am so impressed by this final project. I thank you to staff and everybody, um, the subcommittee who worked on this that I was not part of. I'm, this is really good, 10 out of 10. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, uh, if the uh, recorder, please call a roll. Councilor Anderson. Aye. Councilor Phillips. Aye. Councilor Leung. Aye. Councilor Gonzalez. Aye. Councilor Hoy. Aye. Councilor Nordyke is absent. Councilor Varney. Aye. Councilor Stapleton absent. Mayor Bennett. Aye. Okay. We're on our way on that one. Now we go to just a second here. 3.2A. I, uh, I move to adopt resolution number 222-41 authorizing a transfer of appropriations within the city's fiscal year 2023 budget for unanticipated changes. Second. Second by Hoy. Uh, I want to uh, just highlight this uh, uh, for the council, and but particularly for the public, that uh, this is an appropriations transfer that uh, allows work to be done on the Civic Center on um, sort of customer service, a customer service center on the main floor here. It'll make it, I think, a lot more, um, a lot friendlier place to visit uh, for all of us who are here quite a bit, we won't have as many people lost trying to find the meet that the, the uh, room they're looking for, the service they're looking for. Uh, and I wanted to turn it over to, to uh, the city manager to kind of talk about the specifics of this. I think this is just a really important change here at City Hall to make it more useful for the citizens. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, 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 I apologize. What 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 are we? What are we discussing right now? Are we on 5E or what are 3. we 3.2A. Okay, are we gonna go back to 5E? Okay, I apologize. I miss it too. Okay. 5E was the addition, yeah. Oh, I did miss that. I did, uh, yeah, we'll go back to it in just a second. Okay, I apologize. Um, thank you, Mayor. I'm actually going to have our Enterprise Services Director, Krishna Namburi, speak about our new front door project. Okay. Thank you, Kristen. Um, Krishna Namburi, Enterprise Services Director. Um, just to kind of uh, some high level um, highlights of the center, uh, this is a one-stop shop for Salem residents to access city services. And this is um, also like an enterprise-wide initiative uh, from the city to enhance that customer-centric culture. Um, so the center will be providing uh, first year customer service on behalf of all of the all the departments. So it has several um, functions and, and, and business areas within it. Uh, the first one is the call center uh, function for the city with inquiries and uh, routing those calls to the appro appropriate city staff. Um, and the other pieces, it will also be a centralized center for payments and an intake center for applications and documents. Um, so the customer service center uh, will be located at the northeast corner of the civic center. Um, the, it will have six representatives to assist the customers 
uh, one of the neat things about it, if a customer um, customer's immediate need cannot be met by a member of the customer service center, we do have like a, a small meeting room. So another employee, another city employee may be called um, to meet with the customer either virtually or in person. So I think that kind of adds to additional customer experience and the customer uh, service without that uh, customer kind of trying to uh, go to different uh, departments or divisions. So, um, so it's pretty exciting. The staffer we hired um, a supervisor for the customer service center. Bethany Nazario uh, uh, is the supervisor uh, for this particular um, section. So, yeah, if you have any questions, more than happy to answer. Thank you very much. Um, hey, you have the motion. Uh, uh, Amy, do you want to call a roll? Councillor Phillips. Aye. Councillor Leung. Aye. Councillor Gonzalez. Aye. Councillor Hoy. Aye. Councillor Nordyke is absent. Councillor Varney. Aye. Councillor Stapleton absent. Councillor Anderson. Aye. Mayor Bennett. Aye. Okay, 5 e was a walk-on. I sorry, I walked right by it. Uh, Councilor Hoy, do you want to go ahead and put that put on the table? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move we appoint Keith Staley as the City Manager of the City of Salem and approve Mr. Staley's contract terms. Second. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. As everyone knows, we've been going through a process for the last several months. We've had a a wonderful interim city manager uh, performing uh, for us. Well, Ms. Rutherford has done a magnificent job of filling that role and we've appreciated every minute of it. But I know she is enthusiastically looking forward to getting back to her real work uh, running our urban development department. So Mr. Staley is currently a deputy city manager in the city of Olympia, Washington. As you know, it's the state capital to the north of us, which I think is uh, makes him an extra good fit. And during this process, I've had the opportunity to get to know Mr. Staley a little bit. I've spoken, uh, Councilor Stapleton and I did virtual site visits where we spoke to colleagues, subordinates, community members, you name it. We spoke to a number of people and universally, uh, uh, I think I can very fairly say that Mr. Staley is beloved in his community and, they, and is going to be missed. And he is so eager to come here and to be our next city manager. He already has a, 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 an offer in on the house. He is ready to be here. He's ready to be a part of our community and become an integral uh, member of our community, just like he has there in Olympia. And I'm really excited for him to be here and for him to help lead the city into the future. Very good. Yeah, we got the, I, I just want a second. We got the right person here, I think. I, I really do believe the process worked quite well. And this, uh, this is going to be a really outstanding city manager for us, uh, uh, who, who is a uh, professional who I think will stay with us through. The, I, I really think he'll last the rest of his career. I, I really do. I think he's going to really love this community. So uh, just a really excellent choice. The council is going to be. Thank you, Mr. I, I agree. I, I apologize. I agree. I think he's an excellent choice. I think he's the right fit for Salem, and I think he's uh, definitely going to really help uh, take our city to the next level. Yeah, it's just a great choice. And I, one area that impressed me, I want to just mention, was uh, his uh, really outstanding um, work in housing and homelessness. I thought was really uh, uh, kind of almost a, a deal changer to have someone list that as one of their leading abilities. And he's done a great deal of work in Olympia. So uh, really, uh, congratulations on this uh, this choice. Very good. OK. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, vote. Councilor Leung. Aye. Councilor Gonzalez. Aye. Councilor Hoy. Aye. Councilor Nordyke absent. Councilor Varney. Aye. Councillor Stapleton absent. Councillor Anderson. Aye. Councillor Phillips. Aye. Mayor Bennett. Aye. Yay. That's, <laughs> that's great. We'll miss you, Kristen, but <laughs> go back to work. I, I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Okay, let's go to Councillor Hoy on 3.3a. Did I get that? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, I just had to shuffle some paperwork. I move we direct staff to proceed with changing the street name signs from Salem Parkway to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway. Second. Second by Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I made the, the motion uh, just about two years ago to rename. I, at that time, we were looking at Center Street for a number of reasons. Um, it, it worked out that the parkway was really probably a better choice. One of the things that really persuaded me that the parkway would be a better option is that we're going to actually get a presence on I-5 with the signage. And I think that is a really critical statement that we make as the state capital that we that we put this that we're actually going to have a, a sign on um, on the interstate so folks will know exactly um, how we are honoring uh, the the legacy of doc, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I, I just have to mention during this process during the last two years I've received mm, several maybe dozen or so really ugly, hateful messages, including one today that was frankly just, uh, you know, lambasting everything about me and my thoughts on the world. And uh, really, it was just a lot of racist undertone that um, was really disappointing and really just for me highlighted why this is such an important thing to do. Um, and that we really need to just make a statement here in our capital and uh, I'm really proud to be doing this tonight. And I think that having the Parkway uh, renamed in his honor is really, really a great thing. And I'm really, really happy about it. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hoy. Uh, Councillor Anderson. Thank you. I agree with everything that um, uh, Councillor Hoy said, except about, you know, I'm sorry he got those messages. But I will tell you, this is consistent with the Salem City policy where we've adopted resolutions uh, condemning institutional racism, condemning white supremacy, and saying Salem is an inclusive city open to all. Uh, I also think that it is excellent to have the parkway as opposed to Center Street because that's a more major street and everybody will see it. And finally, as one whose father marched with Dr. King in the 60s in open housing march, uh, marches in Chicago, uh, uh, I really support this. It's long overdue. It's terrific. And it's a way to honor the legacy. But now we also have to move forward with, uh, we've got the name, we have to continue to move forward with concrete steps. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else? Okay. Amy, do you want to call the roll? Councillor Gonzalez. Aye. Councillor Hoy. Aye. Councillor Nordyke absent. Councillor Barney? Aye. Councillor Stapleton absent. Councillor Anderson? Aye. Councillor Phillips? Aye. Councillor Leung? Aye. Mayor Bennett? Aye. Okay, great. Motion passes. 3.3C. Uh, Mr. Anderson. Thank, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, I move that the um, the council authorized grant agreements with the state of Oregon to uh, support sheltering and sanitation services to uh, accept a two and a half million dollar grant to support sheltering uh, and to execute a grant agreement with the state of Oregon to accept an additional $750,000 grant to support sanitation services. Second. Second. Second by um, Phillips. Um, I, this is part of three motions uh, uh, that two, three of a uh, four motions actually three of which we already passed in the in the uh, uh, consent calendar, and they are this one 3.3 C, 3.3 D, 3.3 E, and 3.3 F. And I pulled one of them just to talk about all of them because I want would like the public to know that we are actually taking concrete steps to address with compassion, but also practicality, the uh, um, homelessness, unsheltered population issue we have in our city. Um, 
And when you look at it, uh, what we have come up with over $8.15 million in expenditures and capital expenditures that we are going to use to provide navigation center, um, uh, uh, sanitation, all sorts of things that are desperately needed by our homeless population to get them uh, um, into something that is much more conducive to living uh, a, a natural and um, uh, fulfilling life as opposed to living out on the streets. So this is fantastic. Uh, I really look forward to spending this $8.15 million. And it's uh, a clear example of the council's um, intentions and dedications and concerns about uh, uh, um, our unsheltered neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Hoy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is kind of one of those situations where I was, I kind of get to see it a little bit full circle because I was proud to support these expenditures uh, as a member of the legislature and I'm really proud to be uh, voting to accept them here. And I also just also want to call out um, the funding from the Marion County Board of Commissioners, the $3 million that they're putting forward. I think that it's important that we acknowledge that and we thank them for that and that we acknowledge the partnership that we have been forging and continue to forge with them in addressing not only homelessness, but mental health, behavioral health issues here in our community. And I think that strong partnership is critical and I look forward to uh, strengthening it even more. And this uh, is certainly takes us uh, three million steps closer to strengthening that uh, relationship. And I really appreciate it. So thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I could just add, uh, sure. I I neglected to mention Marion County is giving the $3 million, which is 3D, and I agree with everything Councillor Hoy has said. This is a great partnership, not just with the state, but also with the county, and I appreciate the county's efforts as well. Yeah, I want to, uh, I want to agree, too. I, this was one of the uh, goals I had as mayor was to create these relationships with the state and the county, and I'm really proud of the work that's been accomplished. I want to uh, really call out the, the state of Oregon. The work we've done with the legislature uh, has been extraordinarily successful. It's been historically successful uh, compared to the way it has been historically between the city of Salem and the state of Oregon. We're, we're really successfully working our way through. And I want to particularly uh, recognize the assistance of uh, uh, Senate President Peter Courtney and the tremendous work he's done with us, as well as uh, the success we've had with Marion County. Again, a situation that was somewhat undeveloped uh, uh, for many years. And I think that uh, we, we've really created a great relationship with these folks. And I, I'm really pleased to hear that there's an understanding of that and that there's a real desire to continue to foster that. This has been a real a really successful partnership with these two entities, along with HUD and uh, all of the other entities that have been so supportive of our uh, homeless and housing programs. Councilor Phillips. Yeah, I mean, at the risk of repeating what was said before me, um, I agree with everything that's been said. This takes years of work and to, to see it come to fruition tonight when so many other historic things are coming through, um, you know, like uh, Councillor Anderson said, over $8 million of funding uh, from uh, outside entities, including Marion County, uh, the state legislature. It's, it's just incredible. I mean, I think, you know, in the next few months, the, the Navigation Center will be up and online. And that's going to be such a huge addition for our community to end homelessness for, you know, close to 100 people per year moving forward. So uh, this is just, it's incredible. I really appreciate the work of my colleagues, Mayor Bennett, Council President Chris Hoy, everybody on the, the council and especially the legislative uh, subcommittee, the work that you guys have done um, and the staff have done to get us here is not to be understated. And I'm, I'm grateful, this is really good. And I hope we can continue to build on these relationships moving forward because we're gonna need the help. Salem cannot solve homelessness on its own. Okay, very good. Uh, Amy, could you call a roll, please? Councillor Hoy. Aye. Councillor Nordyke, absent. Councillor Barney. Aye. Councillor Stapleton, absent. Councillor Anderson. Aye. Councillor Phillips. Aye. Councillor Leung. Aye. Councillor Gonzalez. 
Aye. Mayor Bennett. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Go to information reports. Can find it here. Excuse me as I wander through this thing. Any anything on information reports? Anybody wants to explore? Any action anyone wants to take? Councillor Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is on 6A. Uh, it's a decision about uh, um, wireless communications and putting up, uh, changing a, a, a small cell, installing a small cell wireless communications uh, uh, facility on a replacement pole. I don't know who's here. I don't think uh, Ms. Cole is here, but can somebody from the uh, community Development Department uh, be available to answer a question I have? Lisa. Hey, Lisa. <laughs> I'm looking at the very last page of this where there is a picture that says, here's what it, the existing is, and there's a picture of here's what the proposed is, and I see absolutely no difference, and maybe the difference is it looks like there's a little thing about the size of a shoebox on the top of the same pole, that's all it is? Yeah, it's generally two things. The Usually the pole is replaced, and so things go inside the pole that you don't see. And then on the outside, there's a little tiny equipment box. So most of the, we don't really get cell towers anymore. We're getting these small cell, and they're generally inside a new pole. Um, very camouflaged and hard to see. Well, that's great. I'm glad yeah. to see that, and I, I, I'm all for increasing uh, this kind of cellular access. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Does this mean no more fake trees? <laughs> I think it. I think it might. I know you Excellent. were a fan of those, but <laughs> but we will keep some of those fake trees just because they're so odd to look at. Yeah, exactly. Really hope. Yeah. It's just amazing. It'd be really interesting sometime, Lisa, to hear from uh, Comcast or Xfinity or whoever and the phone company just kind of what they are doing technologically to resolve what had been, we used to have these called up pretty regularly when they'd want to put one up disguised as something else. Uh, I, I just think it's real interesting that it's come down to a, a pole and that's it, that's pretty, pretty good. Okay, so that's your big deal in my neighborhood. Anyway. Okay, I think that's it then, we're adjourned. Thank you very much. For more videos and for more information, go to capitalcommunitymedia.org and follow us on social media.